Welcome to Sikkim 365 Radio, presented by IdealMRI.com. High-quality MRIs for $497 or less. IdealMRI.com. On a third down, pressure coming. Going to set up the screen. It's a low throw. What a catch by Allen. Touchdown. Touchdown. With time and downfield. And that ball is intercepted by Woods. Xavier Woods now on the return, staying in and bringing it out just beyond the 40. The 3 o'clock hour is sponsored by Waco Custom Marketplace. Meats, sweets, Texas treats, and a cut above the rest. 425 Lake Air Drive, Waco. Second down and goal. Prescott. Gallup. Here's David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. All right, here we go. It is, yes, one of those where you stick your head in the tank of gasoline and light it with whatever blowtorch or match you need. Paul Catalina, David Smoke, Craig Smoke, Dylan Chapman is running the mothership as well here as we are live until 6 on Sikkim 365 Radio. We have everything you could imagine. Kind of wrapping up everything from what happened over the uh, Friday WNBA draft. We'll have legendary Ann Myers from the Phoenix Mercury. We'll have Indiana Fever head coach Marion Stanley. We'll also have Jaden Owens from UCLA and Plano West High School, who is transferring to Baylor. We'll have Eric Galco on the NFL draft. Baylor running backs coach Justin Johnson. William Bradley King, who's transferring from Arkansas State to Baylor. Leroy Jordan, Graylin Arnold, and Rick Tellender. Chicago Suns columnist as well, who was a part of the last dance. Paul, your thoughts quickly. We'll have Jason King in a minute on Jared Butler news, but what, what were your thoughts? Did you get to watch any of it at all? I, I actually watched both of them today. I uh, actually just finished the other one while I was eating lunch uh, about an hour ago. And the second one, I thought it was fantastically produced. I thought it went, uh, I like the way it kind of bounces. It's not, it's not a linear, it's not told in a linear fashion. You know, they, they tell you these little bits and pieces of that last season and then give you some backstories. It's really interesting. Craig? No, I love those teams. I was a Bulls fan at that time, as a lot of people were, kind of like LeBron fans nowadays uh, because of MJ and uh, just hearing the music of the intros and, and hearing those personalities. It was fantastically done, and I know a lot of people just wish they could watch the whole series right now and not have to wait you know, for you know, a few days to go by to get to that, get to that next episode. Yeah, and, and the way they ended it was fantastic. Rick Tellender, who covered those teams with the Chicago Sun-Times, he's still there, will join us in about 10 to 12 minutes. Also, the news today that Jared Butler is going to enter the NBA draft. We know Macy Oteague has already made that decision. We'll see what happens with either one of them. Paul, does this mean he's done, or does this mean he's going to tip his toes in the water? I think he's just going to t- at least tip his toes in the water. But I would do it if I were a player and I had the opportunity to. And, and now that they have the safety net of being able to go back, I would I would totally do it. It's If they lose both Butler and Teague, though, that's a huge loss. Because if Jared oh. Butler, if he starts going and get, finding out that he might be a top 15 pick, then he's gone. Yeah, I think it would be it would be really, really. A, if this is a team picked among the top four or five for next year as well. Jaden Owens from UCLA is transferring to Baylor. She'll join us today around four forty or four forty five. And then a couple of other notes today: the seven on seven, the high school football Texas seven on seven has been canceled. They will not have that this summer at uh, College Station. And the Cowboys today began what is their off-season program, first team meeting virtually. And this was Mike McCarthy. It kind of kind of kickstarts what he's doing. No, no off-season workout bonuses, but they do have a number of players that they want to have those meetings with. We're now joined by Jason King, Sikkim365.com, who's all into Baylor men's basketball, but really everything else as well. Jason, what does the Jared Butler mean, and how do you feel like Scott Drew and company react to it? Well, I think they were expecting it, and, I, and to, to be frank, I wouldn't be surprised if we, if we saw a Mark Vidal or Davion Mitchell do the same thing. you got to remember, a lot of times guys do this just to get feedback uh, from NBA scouts to kind of see where they are, see what they need to work on. You know, some coaches even encourage it because that, that feedback is so valuable. You know, so in a way, I'm not surprised. I was a tad concerned, though, when I read his tweet. It was, it was so long and involved. It seemed like a, a really well-thought-out goodbye almost. And, uh, you know, uh, I still think, you know, he's going to come back. Uh, you know, right now he's projected to go mid-second round, uh, and that's not a guaranteed contract. Although a lot of times when, when guys get drafted early or middle of that second round, 
those teams will go ahead and give them a, a two year deal for anywhere from eight hundred grand to, to a million a year. So I definitely think if Jared wanted Jared Butler wanted to be on an NFL, uh, NBA roster next year, he could be. I mean, and I don't I don't think there's any concern that you know if he were to get drafted, he wouldn't make the team. But I, I think unlike the Macy OT, who really I don't think would help his chances a whole lot, or and, excuse me, enhance his stock a whole lot by coming back. I think he kind of is what it is. I think Butler, if he came back, really has a chance to elevate and, and catapult into that first round, which could mean millions of more dollars. So I think at the end of the day, he'll come back. And I, I think also just the, the chances he has to, to accomplish some, some really neat things at Baylor and leave a, a really good legacy. I think that kind of stuff's important to him. So I'm crossing my fingers. We'll, we'll see him in a Baylor uniform next year. What's the highest probability to happen? That Jared Butler leaves and Macy Oteague comes back. Macy Oteague leaves and Jared Butler come back. Or they both decide to come back together. Mm-hmm. In order, I would probably say, I think, you know, Butler comes back. He stays in the, you know, does not come back. Number two would be uh, both of them coming back together, I think. Um, I, you know, right now I'm hearing that Teague, you know, is getting some pressure from family members and things of that sort to just go ahead and stay in the draft and, you know, play overseas if you have to. But, you know, I also think that, you know, his teammates and coaches will really be in his ear and put a lot of pressure on him to, to get back to Waco. And hopefully that's what happens. And again, I just feel like Butler is going to be back. Some of those things are so important to him. And I do, I feel like he's the best guard Scott Drew's ever had. I really do. I know that Pierre Jackson and Tweedy Carter and guys like that are really good, but I just think he's an all around guard. I think he's the best player that that's played for him, uh, for Scott Drew on the perimeter. So let's, let's hopefully see him again. Jason, you said you wouldn't be surprised to see Vital or Mitchell do the same. Do you have any sort of an idea on a timeline or kind of where those, those guys are in the thought process? No, I, I don't, but I mean, it would have to happen soon. And, and, and those aren't guys that I'm too worried about, you know, that would stay in. But uh, I, I think that they may just seek that feedback, you know, and I probably wouldn't panic or get as, as worried about those two if you see it. But, uh, but, you know, you never know, too. I mean, if, if a couple of guys leave and announce they're staying in for good and other guys follow suit, all of a sudden you've got a, a problem on your hands. But with, with, with this team and, and the things they can accomplish next year, with a guy like Vital being – you know, six months away from graduating and all. I, I just think you know, he'll be back and, and Mitchell as well. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate the uh, immediate, okay. right off the top opinion from a guy that's right there in the middle of all that, Jason King, Sikkim365.com. If you watch The Last Dance, they move this up like three months or two months because there's nothing other than, yes, the NFL draft. We'll have a lot of that coverage this week, including Graylin Arnold later on today at 530. But if you watched it, Here's someone who covered that team. Here's someone who was a part of the documentary, the series, Rick Talander of the Chicago Sun-Times, a columnist next on Sikkim 365 Radio. Dr. Kent Petty wants you to be the highest performance man you want to be. Are you sluggish, lack energy? Do you suffer from low sex drive? Petty Clinic Low T offers discounted comprehensive lab work to check on your various levels that can make a difference. It's not only time for you to be the man you want to be with higher energy and stamina and improved sex drive, but also the healthiest and high performance man. Screening for cardiac heart disease risk, EKG, cholesterol panel, blood pressure monitoring, testosterone or growth hormone deficiency, male infertility, hepatitis C, and prostate cancer screening. Petty Clinic Low T offers replacement therapy for testosterone or growth hormones, weight management therapy, and nutritional advice. It's not only time for you to be the it's not only time for you to be the man you want to be with higher energy, stamina, and improved sex drive, but the healthiest and highest performance man. Petty Clinic Low T.com, Petty Clinic Low T.com on Old Hewitt Road, just off Highway 84 in Woodwood. Petty Clinic Low T. At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be a part of the Waco community. We're a small family business here in Central Texas. In times like these, the cost of health care has never been more important. And unfortunately, significant illness and injuries still occur. That's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through this difficult time. If you need an MRI, ask your doctor about Ideal MRI. You can schedule online in minutes at IdealMRI.com or call 833-IDEAL-MRI. And please, remember to follow CDC guidelines and practice social distancing. Stay home except for the essentials, and be safe. Together, we'll get through this. Our communities are facing unprecedented times. At Boozer's Jewelers, we care about you and your family. If you're like me, your home has unwanted or unused jewelry lying around. 
they can have value. And that means we can turn that jewelry into instant cash. This is a great way to get the most value from your unwanted jewelry. At Boozer's Jewelers, we buy all kinds of unused jewelry. So give us a call and let us give you peace of mind and cash for your unwanted or unused jewelry. Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, the team physician of Baylor Athletics. Our doctors specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of any and all sports-related injuries. Celebrating over a decade of service in Central Texas, our doctors are equipped to handle a wide range of issues, whether it's your foot or ankle, orthopedic spine care, your hand or wrist, knee and shoulder pain, or if you're in need of our arthritis or total joint clinic. Trust the doctors that Baylor trusts. Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. Our goal is to get you back in the game. Y'all listen up. Let me tell you something about group meals from Rudy's Barbecue. It's got all you need for all the folks you gotta feed, smoke, meat, sides, and more. There's everything down to the tablecloth, just like the one that you see at the store. And a bridal shower, it's better than flowers. And a long business meeting, it'll pass the hours. It'll feed all the cousins at a family function. It's better than potluck at a church luncheon. Next time you need to feed 10 or more, call and order a Rudy's Group Meal. Next in line. We're approaching the time to announce the 10th annual Academic All-Stars Team. 20 elite student-athletes who excel in both academic and athletic competition from Central Texas high schools. And right now, focused on the nominations that have come through so many great young men and women to choose from. Hi, this is David Smoke. Our title sponsor, Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, protecting Texans since 1952. 2020 Academic All-Stars Program is also brought to you by Westdale Asset Management, Englander Design Pack, Bentwood Realty, Southwest Sports Medicine, Alan Samuels Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, Coca-Cola Waco, Ray Broker Air Conditioning and Heating, the Texas Sports Hall of Fame, H-E-B, the McLean Group, Universal Windows Direct, Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, and the Waco Foundation. We will announce the team on Friday, May the 1st, and highlight them throughout the month of May. It's the 10th annual Academic All-Stars team highlighted the elite student-athletes in Greater Central Texas right here on Sikkim 365 Radio. Chicago Sun's columnist, Sun Times columnist Rick Talander will join us momentarily at the bottom of the hour. Eric Galco, OptimumScouting.com. He also was the director of player personnel for the what was the XFL. So uh, on the text line, 254 339 1122, brought to you by River Bend Liquor and Wine. In the chat room, brought to you by Willis Law Firm on Sikkim365.com. What were your thoughts if, in fact, you did watch The Last Dance? What was it you came out of that thinking and, and the ending? Does it make you want to like, well, I saw this. Let's just binge watch all 10 episodes. I really enjoyed seeing the NBA players' reaction to this. They had, you know, a good little thread put together on one of the sports websites that had, you know, 15 or 20 tweets from various current players who were watching along. And each one of them was just either, you know, young enough to where they were having their eyes open somewhat to those magical Bulls teams and the magic of Mike more so than they'd ever been before, or some were just, you know, getting reinvested in that time period, and, and they knew they were already well aware of how special it was, but just the overwhelming kind of feeling or response that, that I seem to get from those NBA players was deliver the entire series to us right now. We'll watch it in one sitting, and uh, that was pretty cool to see something, especially right now, get so many people excited and amped up uh, because we're so lacking in sports news uh, here over these last few weeks that, uh, man, what a perfect time for this thing to drop, and it made a big impact last night. I agree. I think everyone's thirsty, and that that's just not just some documentary that they just threw out there because nobody's doing anything it was a documentary that was supposed to be released in june and they realize right now the timing that this this is there's going to people who just well your ratings will be great this. for it yeah yeah destroy this i mean they want seriously i i, I probably could have watched another hour or two i'm not going to stay up too much later than that but i could have watched episodes three maybe or four or dvr'd them and then gotten up this morning and watched more well that's and they're just going to keep us on the hook for five weeks now so see that's that's one of those is they're so smart because five weeks is right now is almost perfect 
Yeah, I mean, who knows what's going on in five weeks from now. We have no idea, quite frankly. We're all by the seat of our pants, and so one week brings uh, something new or more of the same. But, yeah, we could be living in an entirely different world here in five weeks, and this thing could be wrapping up right in time to you know tip the NBA second half for all we know. Yeah, there was a lot of tease and build up to this about, like, you might see a side of Michael Jordan that you don't like in this, and if you're a Jordan fan... I think if you are really a Bulls fan or an admirer of Michael Jordan, none of this should surprise you. No. At, at all. Whoops. No. Whoops. Sorry about that. That's me. All right, go ahead. He was yeah. very much a, a polarizing figure, but he was uh, also – uh, you know, a guy who had his own issues that were just a little bit more well hidden because of the fact that we didn't have TMZ and all these other outlets that were, you know, constantly covering these guys at every party or bar that they showed up to. But oh yeah, Mike was, he was uh, a guy who spent his money and gambled his money and drank his money and smoked, you know, expensive cigars and hung with Barkley and, and had a grand old time uh, behind the scenes and, you know, had a little bit of darkness to him. I mean, he was a little bit of a dark guy in some ways, and, and that was just never really fleshed out the way, you know, a LeBron James is fleshed out these days, which is, you know, uh, fascinating to, to see that kind of reexamined all these years later. So I think by comparison, I think we probably have the same relationship with Jordan that we have with LeBron right now. And, and like, if the worst thing that Jordan's going to do is bet on some golf, you know, I, I, again, I'm not going to be, you know, mad or whatever he was doing. You know, that that wasn't a, wouldn't have ever upset me. Again, I I think you know the, the two bad things that people don't like LeBron James for was the kind of arrogant way he announced he was going to Miami, which you know was was a mistake in the long run. And I, I mean, at least to announce it that way, not to go. He won titles there, but uh, and then the fact that the only other thing I I don't like about LeBron James is that he's kind of hypocritical on his on his outspoken views. When you know, look, you can be a, a you know a justice warrior, all that stuff, but then when you don't want to say anything about China when something's going on, then come on, man. Well, him, Popovich, uh, yeah. Steve Kerr, they're all in that same boat of being very outspoken when it you know suits their agenda, but on other you know human rights issues, they're mysteriously quiet. Yeah, there, there's a little bit of hypocrisy to that. I'm glad that Michael Jordan didn't touch on those types of issues. Mm -hmm. You know, we almost want athletes to speak out on everything. I don't know why we look to Hollywood and the sports world for opinions on major things in life, but that's something that we as a society do. I'm glad that I didn't look to Michael Jordan for that. I looked at him to play basketball and be a superstar and sell cool products and you know that that was and keep me entertained and, and boy did he keep he, me entertained. I would he's the guy, he's one of the guys that would make me stop and watch if I was walking. Absolutely. This is from the two five four seven one seven. Do y'all think it would have affected Jordan if we if everyone knew these things while playing? In other words, some of the things, and I, I, I thought, I thought there had been enough, a, a little bit of the leaks of how passionate and fierce and intense he was. Yeah, I don't think that's what he's talking about necessarily. I think he's maybe talking more about the gambling and the the things like that. I may be wrong on that, but no, I think his fierceness and his competitiveness on the court oh, was okay. well. Uh, known and well talked about for the most part. Obviously talked about more later on after his career was over with, with all these you know lookbacks and things. But you know I think that was that was pretty well known. I think his off the court life though was a little bit more of a you kind of knew some stuff but didn't really know everything like you would know these days. He and Tiger, who are two monstrous personalities, have both for the most part avoided political statements. There are people that have actually said they're disappointed in the fact that they didn't speak up enough. But they were almost like corporations. And you wonder if in the end that's exactly what they should have done. It, it, again, you, you have those who spoke out like Ali and others, and then you have some that just felt like it wasn't their place. Yeah. And Craig, by the way, you're right. TJ, you answered what he was trying to mention if that would have affected his play if we would have known some of this while he was actually in his career. Yeah, you know, the, the gambling side in particular, uh, he was pretty nefarious for that, and it was just one of those things that sort of was known but not really known and, and definitely not talked about all that much. I think we would have probably – I just think that time period was so different. Uh, if we had known that type of stuff these days about Michael Jordan, then I think we'd probably see – you know, some of those stories of like Jerry talking to Dez and telling him or Zeke, you know, you gotta you gotta straighten up, you gotta you gotta act better. I don't know if anybody could have approached Michael Jordan and told him to to act up, but yeah. during that time period you didn't really have to. It wasn't it wasn't as much of a concern as it is these days. Well, I I wonder how many of the you know, because Jordan 
he had endorsements, but he didn't have a bunch of like he didn't have a million endorsements. He had like five huge ones. He had Nike and Gatorade and mm-hmm. and McDonald's and things like that. We'll so. see if we can get Rick Tillander from the Chicago Sun Times, a columnist. He was a part of it. You saw him. You saw a lot of different people: Clinton, Obama, many others that were a part of uh, just. That's just two two episodes into what are ten. Uh, also, let's see, Leon said on the text line brought to you by Riverbend Liquor and Wine. What if Michael Jordan would have joined the cocaine and drink club? We wouldn't have number 23. No, he, we wouldn't. No, he, he, he avoided that. Yeah, he could have been Len Bias uh, for all we know. But, yeah, that was an interesting part of uh, the documentary last night, the traveling cocaine circus uh, when he was a rookie, uh, that there was a cocaine party amongst the team uh, his rookie season, and uh, he decided to not partake in that. So that was just one little aspect of uh, the documentary last night. And, yeah, he, he very well could have turned out to be a tragic story had that uh, had that gone a little bit differently. But uh, kudos to him for not taking part. From Deontay, I was born in 91 during this run. I was just a kid who loved sports, but I actually see and understand what made MJ so great. To get in the in-depth look inside of everything going on during this dynasty is amazing. Can't wait for the next nine or eight episodes. We're now joined by Rick Tallender. He's a columnist and has covered Chicago like nobody's business with the Chicago Sun-Times, and he joins us. He's a part of the documentary. And, Rick, I know you have so much to do, and, in fact, you're joining us. We appreciate it on Sikkim 365 Radio. What has been the feedback you've received, basically, with you're a part of it, but just the way people just grasp and embrace this documentary? Well, First of all, my uh, my daughters, I had three daughters and a son, and the three daughters all called me after and said, oh, my God, Dad, oh, Dad, you're so cool. <laughs> like, it took you this long yeah. to figure that out? So, yeah, you know, all my friends, I didn't know that I was going to be in it. I actually, I mean, I knew I'd be in it, I guess, in some capacity, because Jason Hayer, the uh, director, started this. Man, you talk about an oddity for these people who made this actually made this documentary and they're still working on the final two episodes i don't know if you know that but they talk about it plus they have to do it from home all the editing and everything they're scattered all around because of the uh, covid virus so um it's been forever but people just seem relieved and uh happy and they say you know how cool to have been involved in it's virtually like an arthurian fable this is almost like you know, Shakespeare to have a good time with this thing, with these characters, <laughs> from Jerry Krause to Pippin to Jordan to Phil Jackson, you know, it's a lot of characters there. I'm just after watching the first two episodes, and I, I remember back to that time when I was in high school and how much I thought Jerry Krause was the dumbest guy in the world for playing <laughs> poker the way he did with all this. And, of course, in Chicago, he's not very popular because he's always going to be the guy who, who did build the dynasty, but he also is the guy who broke it up. How do you think he'll play out? Will, he, his, will we change our minds about Jerry Krause after this is all over, or were people pretty much right about that? No, I, I don't think they will. It's very complex. I, I think you hit it pretty close. You know, and he did, he died a couple of years ago, a few years ago, I actually did uh, a little eulogy, you know, in the paper. And he, he was, he was a complex guy. He was short. He was not physically attractive. He was not athletic. He was white. He was everything these great players that he was around was not. And Michael Jordan, now you saw last night, Michael Jordan, I would talk to Jordan about this all the time, like, hey, maybe you should let it go, Mike. He would never let it go that they would not let him play after he broke his foot. And he came back, and you saw some dramatic footage, I'd forgotten about that, where they literally took him out with, what, 14 seconds to go in a game because he hit his limit. And if Stan Albeck, uh, the coach, or was Kevin Lockery, I wanted to, I think it was Albeck, if he didn't Yank Jordan at that second in a game that was on the line, it was uh, anybody could have won, he would have lost his job. And, and that's a true story. So it was, it was like a caged animal finally being released, and then you say, nope, we're putting you on a, on a leash. And that, that rift between Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player ever, and Jerry Krause never healed. And, of course, when your leader and this dynamic personality feels that way, Everybody else on the team is going to feel that way, too, even if they didn't feel it directly. And you saw Scottie Pippen was so underpaid, 
so incredibly underpaid. He was below the 100th highest paid player in the league. And for a while there, he was, you know, the best number two in the league. Uh, he was so underpaid that I think he could have assuaged that. Jerry Reinsdorf, the owner, could have. And certainly Jerry Krause. He's a special guy. We'll make a special exception. We'll renegotiate your contract. But his anger and his rage before this season particularly was legit. I remember it well. We all knew he had an injured foot. He injured it in the, uh, the championship playoffs in 96-97. He didn't have surgery on it until right when the season started. So, yeah, I think he missed 35 games. Well, that hurt the team. That hurt everybody. But that was his, like, up years to Jerry Krause. And that's real. So, Krause had no people skills. None. Zero. And as I said, his, he was so separate in just physical appearance from these other light, lean, African-American ball players who lived, gave their lives everything. And there's this guy who's everything they are not and with no uh, table manners whatsoever. And it was an irritant. And as you also saw, like one of my kids said, Dad, why was, why was he sitting right there on the bus? <laughs> you know, and that's true. Get the hell out of the locker room. Go away. That's the other thing. He was always around, and it drove the players crazy. It, it really did. Uh, you know, guys like Steve Kerr could kind of deal with it. Judd Bushler, Luke Longley. I mean, you know, they were less troubled. None of them liked him either. They had jokes about him. They, everybody would joke about him. But the um, stars of the team, particularly Jordan and Pippen, it was that animosity was absolute real. It was really cool to see a lot of current NBA players who were watching along, and they were kind of gaining maybe a new appreciation in some ways for Mike and just the player that he was. But I saw a lot of people really maybe having their eyes opened up to just how great of a player Scotty was as well, and you mentioned him being underpaid. But do you think this documentary allows for some people to have an appreciation of just how good of a player he was as well? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, there, there are, as I said, this is almost like a, kind of a mythical tale where you find these classic – prototypes for a human being. Everybody needs, every genius, every leader needs a number two. You need that second in command. And the second in command sometimes will get promoted to number one, and it doesn't work out. Uh, One thing that we all saw here in Chicago, when Michael Jordan retired from basketball in 1990, at the end of 94, and uh, was out, or was it 93? They won their championship, 93. So he's out all of the 93 season and part of the 94 season, Scotty was moved up to number one. And it didn't work out so well. He's not a number one. He's a number two. He's a great role player. No harm in that. Nothing negative about that. His skills were incredible. Incredible. Uh, And Jerry Krause, (laughs) when he first found out about Scotty, again, at a little dinky school, Central Arkansas, Mm -hmm. Krause, he said, oh my gosh, oh my God, I saw this guy. You can't believe it. I, I, well, I can't even use his terminology, what he said. Um, but he went crazy. He's got arms down to the floor. The guy can jump to the moon. Nobody knows about him. His hands are as big as a plate, on and on and on. A lot like Dennis Rodman in the way that he grew 11 inches after high school. Scotty Pippen grew six inches in college. He was the manager on the team, 6'1", 155 pounds. He grows six inches, maybe seven. I don't know. He was six, seven, I'd say, at the end. And all of a sudden, you've got this incredible thing, this incredible basketball player with an incredible story himself from rural Arkansas, the last of 12 kids, you know, uh, pure poverty. Not like Michael. Michael's storyline is different. His father, his mother, his upbringing, his brother's. Uh, very different tales, but Scotty deserves a huge amount of credit. He does not have the charisma, does not have the personality, does not have the leadership skills that Michael Jordan does in any way, shape, or form. And he found it out, and after that, he was a much better number two, (laughs) you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) So anyway, that whole dynamic is there. But without him, Michael, he said it many times, we wouldn't have won any championships. Rick Talander with us uh, from the Chicago Sun-Times, was with Sports Illustrated for a long time as well. I guess to wrap it up, we do appreciate it today. Do you, could, could you have binge-watched like 10 episodes in a row? Could you, if, if other than sleep deprivation, uh, could you have just kept watching that? Absolutely. I'm so binge. 
there's no question. Listen, I talked to the director, Jason Hare. He said each episode has to be exactly 50 minutes. And he said, try writing a column. It's got to be 623 and a half words, <laughs> every one of them. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I could have gone on and on. That, it, they, uh, this is a drama. There's more stuff coming, too, mm-hmm. man. Um, a lot of good stuff coming. And, and before I go, i got to give a big shout-out to my sister, Kim, in Dallas. And to my son, he's in College Station. Okay. Heck, yeah, I love you guys. Uh, miss you. Wish we were at all sheltering. We'll see you soon. But, uh, you know, Texas is my place. My mom and dad lived there until they died. And mm. anyway, love Texas. Love Waco. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. We will send you a link of this in case they didn't catch it, and we'll have you then can send the link to your family. How about that? Oh, that's awesome. I'd love to do that. Thank you so Rick, much. Rick, I'm serious. I know you. Thank God. I just had this text on our chat a chat room brought to you by Willis Law Firm. Still crazy to think this radio station didn't even exist a few weeks ago, but now has a sports writer who was on the Last Dance episode series last night. Thank you for being a part of the show. <laughs> My pleasure, guys. Thank Take you. Care. That's Rick Talander, Chicago Sun-Times. That's a great way to start it, along with Jason King on the Jared Butler decision, at least for now. Coming up next is NFL Draft Week. It's here. And Eric Galco, OptimumScouting.com, will join us. And then UCLA and Naismith legend and Myers of the Phoenix Mercury. This is Sikkim 365 Radio. At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be a part of the Waco community. We're a small family business right here in Central Texas. Our goal is to bring down the cost of health care while maintaining high quality. In today's world, the cost of health care has never been more important, and unfortunately, significant illnesses and injuries still occur. That's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through the difficult time. We offer premium MRIs just like a hospital with state-of-the-art technology and specialists, but you'll pay less, sometimes thousands thousands of dollars less, whether you're using insurance or not. At Ideal MRI, we accept most insurance and there are no hidden costs. We even offer financing. Everything's included in the price. And more importantly, you'll not get a bill in the mail later on. So if you need an MRI, ask your doctor about Ideal MRI. You can schedule an appointment safely from home online in minutes at IdealMRI.com or give us a call 833-IDEAL-MRI. And please remember to follow CDC guidelines and practice social distancing. Stay home except for the essentials and be safe and together we'll get through this at idealmri.com we are facing some unique challenges at this time we want to do our part to support not only our community but our medical providers who are really overtasked right now governor greg abbott has required dental offices to postpone all elective dental procedures but still be available for dental emergencies at this time dental emergencies are those that are defined as something that would make somebody consider going to the emergency room for treatment. We're offering to see you at our office Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 8 to noon, and we will waive all fees. We're doing this to support the community and support the medical system. This will allow the overtasked medical community to focus on the truly needy at this time. In the midst of what seems to be so much gloomy news, we want to send a positive signal of our faith in our community and in each other. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. We are all in this together. We're all in this together. We are all in this together. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. We are all in this together. We're 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 all in this together. We are all in this together. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. Thank you and God bless. Hyatt Edward Jones become one of the biggest financial service companies in the world. By not acting that way, financial strategies, one-on-one advice, it's a big difference. And that's why Brad Wilson, your Edward Jones financial advisor, makes sense of investing. Experience the difference for yourself. Brad Wilson, 250 Sharon Drive in Woodway, 254-776-4337. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Hi, this is Jeff Hume, head football coach at Midway High School, and you're listening to Sikkim 365 Radio with David Smoke. Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. Hey, this is Bryce Petty, former starting quarterback and two-time Big 12 champion. And I know firsthand the importance of being in top shape both on and off the field. So listen up, men. If you're feeling beat down day in and day out and looking for that high-performance edge that separates the men from the boys, then look no further than the Petty Clinic Low T in Waco. Petty Clinic is a comprehensive men's health care clinic with an atmosphere catering to men. Board-certified Dr. Kent Petty has a special interest in offering the highest quality medical care to men of all ages. Some of the services offered include 
include screening and treatment for low testosterone or thyroid, infertility, high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, while offering comprehensive wellness exams and complete men's health lab panels. High performance men, remember, it's not just a petty thing. This is Bryce Petty, encouraging you to reach out and Google search Petty Clinic Low T or go to PettyClinicLowT.com and get your complimentary lab screening today. This NFL Draft segment on Sikkim 365 Radio is brought to you by Richard Carr Buick GMC Cadillac at the Imperial Exit off Loop 340 in Waco. So many of you have responded today to the Riverbend Liquor and Wine text line and the chat room blowing up brought to you by Willis Law Firm. We will absolutely be able to read all of those and those sponsors are thrilled and we are as well. We are joined by... A good friend of ours, Eric Galco, OptimumScouting.com on this, the week of the draft. You ready? You talk about ready to go full fast forward. Eric, what's the number one story right now as we get close to the start of the draft on Thursday? Yeah, I think the question is going to be uh, and talking to a bunch of teams and people in the industry the last couple hours, the last few days is how does this Tua Tagliavoa uh, situation shake out at Miami? Um, but a team may want him as well. Do the Chargers actually want Justin Herbert? Who's taking Jordan Love? It feels like we're going to have four quarterbacks go in the top 15 picks. But right now, it's tough to figure out which teams that want which quarterbacks, which feels a bit unique compared to past years, uh, especially a quarterback coming into the draft. Because of that and because the Lions and Giants are set at quarterback, do you yeah. think they're in a power position to pretty much get what they want if teams get desperate, especially if Washington uh, kind of goes crazy and drafts a quarterback themselves? Yeah, you know, historically, teams are moving up for quarterbacks, right? Quarterbacks go first in the overall in the draft. Quarterbacks go maybe in the top three with the Jets a couple of years ago, taking Sam Darnold. But usually teams are moving up in the draft to get their quarterback. And history tells you that third overall pick very well will be a quarterback uh, in this draft. I think the Lions would like to move down from what I know of their board. Uh, they've got a lot of defensive players really close that they could go back into somewhere in the middle part of the top ten and still get the guy or a guy. They like quite a bit, but do the Dolphins feel the need to go to three to get their quarterback? Do the Chargers, who's not really a team that moves up in the draft, do they move up to three to get a quarterback? Is there a surprise team like the Raiders or the Jaguars who move up a lot for a quarterback? So I think the Lions have a lot of ammunition. They're happy to move down for a decent offer. I think at the end of the day, that third pick will be traded for a quarterback. But again, genuinely, most years, I kind of have a good feeling by Monday of the draft who's going where quarterback-wise. This year, it's really tough to tell. We've heard about just the, the insane depth of the wide receivers in this class. Eric, how many are you projecting as first-rounders at this point, and where does Baylor's Denzel Mims stack up uh, here just a few days away from the draft? Yeah, it's funny. A lot of depth at receiver in this class, that certainly talked to agree to, and, and a lot of teams I've spoken with have somewhat different boards at receiver after the top three or four guys. Um, but I think what's going to happen is we're going to see the three guys, Lamb, Ruggs, and Judy, all go in the top. 16, 17 picks, maybe all three gone by 515. I think Jordan Jefferson of LSU is also going to be up there. And there's a real possibility we see no other receivers go in the first round and then a decent run somewhere in the second. I think talking with teams, there is a concern for Mims, like it has been for past Baylor receivers, right? Can they run more than that go or those quick routes? Um, can he run the dig? Can he run the post at an NFL level? I think he can. I, I'm a fan of Mims myself, but I think right now teams are – Teams that like Mims don't like Jalen Rager of TCU, right? Don't like KJ Hamlin, but they do like these other guys. So it's going to depend a lot on, A, does Jerry Judy uh, or CeeDee Lamb go to a team that also like Mims? And then additionally, how, how low does Mims go? I think right now, safely, he's somewhere in round two, round three. Uh, but again, a lot's going to determine on who likes Mims and did they get Jordan Jefferson or Jerry Judy in the first. Isn't it amazing that we've seen positions that have had like sometimes their value has been diminished running backs and now then you have some great running backs that come out. Wide receivers, right. you always feel like you could shake a tree. And I've seen that there are as many as 15 or 20 wide receivers in certain drafts, some people's top 100s. Do you Not the specific amount, maybe you have one. Is that what you see as well? Yeah, it's one of the deeper, especially in that second, third round area. And when you're talking second, third round, you're talking about, hey, he's not going to be our, our first banana as our best receiver, our best offensive player. But if he's on our offense, we've got a number one guy, we can do a lot of damage in the passing game. That's what teams feel like, whether it's Mims being a really high-end number two receiver, or Jalen Rager, or K.J. Hamler, being those explosive vertical guys. 
a lot of depth in that part of the draft. You know, I think a lot of teams are saying, hey, Calvin Ridley went first round a few years ago, and there's a lot of Calvin Ridley-like players in this draft going to go on day two, day three. That's why I think teams are excited. So that's going to be a big reason why you might see receivers slip a little bit, but by the mid part of the second round, we're going to see a big run on receivers go because that's really where the value is going to pick up is that, hey, if they don't go first round receiver, if, if the Broncos miss out on a guy or the Raiders miss out on a guy, they're going to be aggressive in round two to get a top receiver because they're the talent not that much different. Where do you see the Cowboys going at 17? Uh, and then maybe, you know, what they do at 17, what do you think they do at 51? Yeah, I think they want to go defense for sure with, with likely both picks, uh, which kind of center being the wild card there with Cesar Ruiz. Uh, Ruiz. And I think they, they've got some day two options, but really not a strong interior line class. And I, I would guess that if the Cowboys do move back from 17, I think they want to add another day two pick to maybe throw two darts at, uh, at interior O line on, on day two of the draft. But I would say right now, if they, they put, uh, Chase on from, from LSU or Xavier McKinley, the safety from Alabama make a lot of sense. Uh, they've got talent at both those positions. But I think long term, they're looking for some stability there. I don't really think linebacker is going to be the pick at 17. Again, if they trade back, a lot of things are in play at that point because they'll have more depth. But I think they want to address linebacker somewhere late day two, early day three to bring in competition. But I'd say pass rusher and safety are their two biggest spots they want to emphasize on day one and day two of the draft. Eric, which of the top quarterback prospects are you most sold on and which one that's likely to be selected high because of the position they're coming out of are you the most unsure about at this moment? Yeah, we, we've got we've got high grades on Burrow and Tua, um, you know, have for, for much of the season. Uh, and there's a big dropout after those two. Those two guys stack up favorably to the, the Sam Darnold, the Pat Mahomes, the Deshaun Watson. We've had graded before. I think both those guys, um, I think both Burrow and Tua are, are a little bit scheme-focused, right? I think with Tua, you've got to have kind of a read option, more focused offense because he's got a quick release and he's a really accurate but timing passer. Burrow, you can improvise a little bit, but you got to throw three, four wides every time for him to be successful. So I think both those guys are going to land in good spots in Cincinnati and whomever Tua lands with um, be successful. But I, I think I have real concerns uh, over Justin Herbert and Jordan Love. I think both those guys are going to need a full year to develop mentally to kind of sync up what they're seeing and what they're throwing and what they're doing. I think Justin Herbert misses too many reads a little bit right now. Certainly get there, smart kid. And then Jordan Love, he's a bit of a gunslinger, but doesn't really know when to take chances and when not to. He's not quite the Pat Mahomes level football IQ. So I think both of those guys, if you told me Justin Herbert and Jordan Love were successful NFL quarterbacks in three years, I'd be surprised if both of them hit. One of them may because they have the talent, but drafting those guys would be scary for me. We'll have Eric Galco, uh, we hope, uh, again throughout and maybe even the post-draft as well from OptimumScouting.com. Eric, your thoughts about how the virtual or the fact they haven't been able to meet, they've been able to talk, they've been able to see people, does that affect someone who was probably not, that, that may have been able to jump into the third or fourth or fifth round or into the draft? How, many, how much does that hurt them? I, I think it really does. I think teams are going to have the same exact board they had in January and February. And I think there's some value to that, right? You trust the film. People keep saying the last couple of weeks, right? You get to trust the film. Don't get swayed by pro day and stuff. But there are a lot of times that teams dodge a bullet by meeting a guy, having him flying to their facility or watching a pro day and realizing, oh, that's not a guy for us. And they're right, right? What, what the pro days do, what these interviews do is not find new players, but they rule guys out. They would have drafted otherwise. So, I think teams are really worried because they know that and they know that, hey, we lost a big part of our cross check to not make mistakes. So I think teams are going to kind of w- talk to teams during the season. Hey, who do you like? And October, November might hold more true than it would in previous years. And again, we'll see the smart teams that did their homework during the college season. Those are the teams are going to win. The teams that have a lot of area scouts that trust their area scouts that have a good analytics process to cross check. Those will be successful. So I think we'll look back in a few years and realize man, five or six teams really killed it in the 2020 draft class and four or five GMs, why they're fired is because of this draft class. I think it'll pack a lot of teams. Eric, thank you, buddy. Appreciate your time as always. And we'll want to get you on eventually again just to talk about your experience with the XFL and and what happened with that because that was a great opportunity for you and so many young men. This is uh, Sikkim 365 Radio. That's Eric Galco, OptimumScouting.com. When we come back, Taya Cooper from Baylor was selected by the Phoenix Mercury, the same team that's won, what, what four WNBA titles, Diana Taurasi, Brittany Griner. They have a vice president, Ann Myers, a legendary Hall of Fame basketball player. She's next on Sikkim 365 Radio.
Our communities are facing unprecedented times. At Boozer's Jewelers, we care about you and your family. If you're like me, your home has unwanted or unused jewelry lying around. They can have value, and that means we can turn that jewelry into instant cash. This is a great way to get the most value from your unwanted jewelry. At Boozer's Jewelers, we buy all kinds of unused jewelry. So give us a call and let us give you peace of mind and cash for your unwanted or unused jewelry. Waco, Texas, a place with its own unique history and a future bright with promise. Full of remarkable growth and opportunity, and what makes it all work is its people, families, raising children, growing businesses. Wacoans are hardworking with a passion for what's next, and we're proud to be from here, helping Waco to grow and prosper. We are the First National Bank of Central Texas, familiar faces making local decisions. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Hi, this is Grant Taft, and I'm a proud listener and supporter of the all-new Sikkim 365 radio show with my friend David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. Sikkim. Ideal MRI is a small family business right here in Central Texas. We are open to support our community through this crisis. When you need an MRI, ask your doctor for an Ideal MRI. Visit us at IdealMRI.com or call us at 833-IDEAL-MRI. I hate my job, but I don't mind getting up in the morning. I dread each day, but I can't wait to get out of bed. You ask me why, and what I'll say to you is true. Well, you can get breakfast tacos at Rudy's Barbecue. Scrambled eggs and brisket, they ain't fooling around. Salsa drap, son, they're the best in town. Barbecue for breakfast, yes, it's true. Put a smile on your morning at Rudy's Barbecue. Hi, this is Mart High School football coach Kevin Hoffman, and I'm a proud listener and supporter of the all-new Sikkim 365 radio show with David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. In this day and age, you must be able to change how you do business. Think outside the box to ensure that you service your customers. And at Waco Custom Marketplace, we've created our own drive through for your Monday, Wednesday, and Friday shopping needs, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So you can still order and enjoy from our great butcher shop and bakery, including two pounds of eight-ounce salmon fillets for $24.05, two pounds of four-ounce catfish fillets for $4.90, sliced ham or turkey, American cheese and smoked sausage, fresh chicken breast, three and a half pound whole chickens, sliced bacon, boneless pork chops, 80-20 ground beef, four pieces of sirloin steak or four pieces of ribeye steak from $19 to $35. Marinated beef or chicken fajita meat plus a loaf of bread, fresh carrots and Idaho or red beef potatoes or white onions, pinto beans and white rice, flour tortillas. So the great product, customer service and tradition continues at Waco Custom Marketplace with a drive through only Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Waco Custom Marketplace, 425 Lake Air Drive in Waco. Let Camille Johnson Realtors guide you seamlessly through the process of buying your dream home or selling your current one, commercial, farm and ranch, or residential. Camille Johnson Realtors can smoothly and successfully lead you through any transaction with a team of 24 experienced agents who are excited about serving you. Camille Johnson Realtors services the entire greater Waco area. If you're in the market to buy or sell, contact Camille Johnson Realtors, 104 Midway Center in Woodway, or find them online at www.camillejohnson.com. Camille Johnson Realtors, elegant, charming. Warm. Welcome home. All right, here we go. Sikkim 365 Radio. This is uh, one of my favorite posts on the Willis Law Firm chat room. Uh, thanks to BG Boyd. Still crazy to think this radio station didn't exist a few weeks ago, but now has a sports writer that was on the last dance last night. Yeah, you know, we are not Baylor exclusive in our content. That's going to be a focus always, of course, but uh, we are going to take a look at some other fun stories from time to time. And right now, there's certainly been a lack of them, but the last dance on ESPN 
has been a godsend for, I think, a lot of sports fans out there, just giving people something to talk about, something to remember, and uh, something fun to watch uh, that's got a lot of different elements to it. So, yeah, to have a, a longtime Bulls writer on, speaking of that very subject matter, is, is pretty cool, and that's the kind of things that we're hoping to bring you on a regular basis on Sikkim 365 Radio. Yeah, and I've, I've had Rick on. It's been a while, long time ago. But I remember doing that, and it, it's been – he was with the Sports Illustrated. He moved to – well, he started working for the Sun-Times like in 95 or 96, which would have been right in the wheelhouse of what they were doing uh, with the second part of the three-peat. Uh, but right now we're, we're trying to track down Ann Myers, and uh, we're not able to get that right yet. But we're going to have a, our 4 o'clock hour, as we tread water just for a second, a 4 o'clock hour, Juice Johnson, running backs coach at Baylor, William Bradley King, the transfer from Arkansas State, the defensive lineman who's coming to play for Baylor, and then turn around as well, and we'll have Indiana Fever head coach um, Marianne Stanley, and right before that, Jaden Owens, the transfer from UCLA for Baylor women's basketball. So a lot of that right now is coming up here on Sikkim 365 Radio. Well, we are awaiting word uh, from Ann Myers, Drysdale, but three Lady Bears getting picked on Friday night with the WNBA draft. Lauren Cox, of course, goes where she was expected to go to the Indiana Fever at uh, number three overall, and it was great to see Lauren, uh, you know, get to get to go at the top of the draft, basically. Not that quite the number one overall pick, but right up there near the top. You also had Taya Cooper and Juicy Landrum selected as well. So the three Lady Bears who you thought had an opportunity to get selected do, in fact, get selected. And I was uh, really thrilled for Juicy. You know, it was kind of a close call on whether or not she was going to be drafted or not, but uh, she got picked relatively early in the third round, so she didn't have to sweat it out too much, and uh, that was that was great to see for La Vega's own, yeah, Juicy Landrum. That, that is fantastic because she was it was right before the draft ended, and you have your teammates go high with Lauren Cox and Taya Cooper, and then you see Juicy Landrum's name pop up with the Connecticut Sun. We're going to hear a little bit from her as well. So the Phoenix Mercury with their incredible tradition, the, Nat- the World Championship, Diana Taurasi, former Baylor All-American and star Brittany Griner, and now they add Taya Cooper to the mix and Hall of Famer Ann Myers, the Hall of Famer from UCLA and for so long involved in basketball, joins us on Sikkim 365 Radio. And your thoughts, thank you, first of all. Uh, I remember you back in the day, when you and I was back in the day. I was there at the same time as well with what you did in college basketball. Your thoughts about the addition of Taya Cooper to your lineup? Well, I'm pretty excited. I mean, I've seen her play when she was at Tennessee and South Carolina and then uh, coming to Baylor. And certainly I think uh, all three great programs and uh, terrific coaches and uh, having Tim Mulkey as their coach, um, just stepping into that point guard position, there's just a lot of confidence. I just love the way she handles the ball and just actually sets up the team. And uh, a lot of it starts with her defense and uh, certainly her her outside game has improved. We know that as far as the three-point shot is concerned. And, um, you know, I, she's going to have to play behind Skylar Diggins-Smith, and uh, but no better player, I think, to, to learn from underneath. And, uh, you know, the thing is there's a lot of competition, but I think uh, having her in camp is going to be a lot of fun. How much did her game improve transferring to Baylor her, her last year? Well, you had two different systems. You had two different coaches. And uh, certainly I, I think that she was able to play differently under Kim, not to say that she wasn't successful at South Carolina. Uh, I think Dawn had her playing a different you know, role. And, uh, and also she was younger. And uh, certainly you mature. And uh, when you're a senior and you come in as a grad student, uh, you're a lot more, I think, cerebral in understanding what you need to do and watching film and so forth. And and uh, where your your life is going, and, and certainly not just academically, but uh, certainly on the court. But just her, her understanding of reading the defense, able to set up her teammates, I think just her leadership out there was, uh, for me, pretty impressive and uh, took control and uh, very aggressive on defense. And, you know, what she averaged over two steals a game, which, you know, you love players that, are playing the point guard position, any position, but are just as aggressive on the defensive end. And uh, I think it was just a different system, a different maturity, a different coach, a different role that she played. 
And she was ready. The, the, the thing that I love about it too, David, is that, that she was ready for the, the, um, the challenge. And, and on, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. No, I just, you know, and playing for a number one program and, and won national championships. And, uh, you know, as I said, I, you raised your level to that and uh, certainly the expectations by your coach and teammates, uh, you want to be able to make them happy. And Kim Mulkey finally got the call for the Hall of Fame a couple of weeks ago, and, and you've been very vocal in your support of her, but you've all, also been very vocal in the fact that you think she should also go in as a player. Uh, she's going in as a coach, but uh, I know that you've apparently said that you're not going to stop until she enters as a player as well. Just your thoughts on Kim Mulkey getting the Hall call, even if it's not exactly what everybody thinks it should be just yet? Yeah, I absolutely. There's no question. If you look at her playing career and what she did in high school, let's and the Olympics and uh, college, and I, I just like to scratch my head and think, okay, she's not in as a player, um, and absolutely deserves to go in as a coach, no question. But uh, hopefully, we can uh, somehow petition to get enough people to support her to get in as a player and be the first woman uh, to be in as a player coach. You've got John Wooden, Bill Sean, in, in as player coaches on the men's side. Uh, but certainly Kim Mulkey to me would be the first to, yeah, I mean, you know, she won four state titles in high school. Did she, uh, did she lose any games in high school or maybe just four? I, I and, well then, uh, yeah, they won four state championships. I know that. And, and right. if, if she lost, uh, believe me, she'll remember the one or two times she did. But. <laughs> right. And then at Louisiana Tech, I mean, she, you know, it was, a, I, I was broadcasting all those games back then, um, back in the seventies and eighties. And, she changed things as far as, I mean, we had Debbie Brockett at Delta State, and Debbie Brockett, 410, was an unbelievable uh, point guard, and she's finally going into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. And uh, and she really changed things with her size. We played with reg- She played with the regular size ball. Uh, Kim did, too. Kim played in the 70s and 80s where she played regular size ball and, and no three-point shot, but she was the little general, and she changed how little girls dress with her little pigtails and uh, her braided pigtails. That was huge. That was a huge fashion statement that Kim Mulkey set. And, but the way she played the game was, I mean, she did, I don't know how to, she was an assassin. I mean, you use that word for a lot of different people, but boy, she just, she never broke. You know, she never changed expressions. She never gave you how she was feeling. She was intense. And she ran things, and uh, she would not be denied. And uh, you just loved her tenacity, the way she played the game. And she just, she, yes, she was what five three, but uh, five one five three. But you know, nobody was going to beat her. And uh, even the game that um, USC won their championship with Cheryl Miller and the Twins, and um, you know, Kim took that last shot. Kim, uh, you know, makes way, you know, gets a little higher. That ball goes in. Um, you know, she just she was fun to watch because she came to play every game. And the the WNBA obviously the season is is delayed because of what is currently going on. Uh, you have won that franchise three WNBA titles, the most recently in 2014. But how do you end up with Brittany Griner? Diana Taurasi, Skylar Diggins Smith on the same roster. That is power packed right there. Well, you know, I tell you, David, it, the league has gotten better and better, and the players and the teams. And uh, we are so excited for Skylar Diggins Smith to come and join Brittany and Diana. And Diana's been going into her 16th season. So, you know, her game has changed. And, uh, but she's still Diana Taurasi. And uh, uh, she's one of the greatest to ever play the game. But. Uh, and Brittany Griner, for three years in a row, has scored 20.7 rebounds and averaged two block shots. I mean, her, you know, defensive player of the year and uh, being all star and Olympian. Um, Brittany has changed the game, and, and you see a lot of young women that are 6'5 and 6'6 and 6'7 six, six and 6'8, six, 6'9 six, uh, that are, are changing the game, and they're following in Brittany Griner's footsteps. But um, to have those three give credit to Jim Pittman and, and Sandy Brundello as far as, you know, switching contracts around. And we had to lose a, a really valuable player in Dewana Bonner, um, you know, to, to make the move to get somebody like Skylar Diggins-Smith. And, and I know she's ready for a, a new beginning. You know, she was 
uh, had injuries in the pregnancy in, in Dallas, and uh, just it was time for her to move on, and we were fortunate enough to get her uh, in our organization. I think she's going to do a terrific job. She just really is a special kid. And thank you so much for your time. Uh, appreciate it. Good luck with what you have going forward, whatever happens with the season, and, and also the addition of Taya Cooper. We appreciate you. A Hall of Famer to join our show means a lot. Thank you. And thanks for all your support. We appreciate it. That's Ann Myers, Naismith Hall of Famer. Her thoughts on Taya Cooper, Brittany Griner, Diana Taurasi, Skylar Diggins-Smith, and also what, Craig, you asked about when it comes to Kim Mulkey. Coming yeah, up. That's the first time I've really heard somebody talk about the pigtails as far as like the fashion statement and, and kind of the impact that that had as well. So that was interesting. Coming up next, we start the 4 o'clock hour. Baylor running backs coach Justin Juice Johnson. This is Sikkim 365 Radio. How did Edward Jones become one of the biggest financial service companies in the world? By not acting that way. Financial strategies, one-on-one advice, it's a big difference. And that's why Brad Wilson, your Edward Jones financial advisor, makes sense of investing. Experience the difference for yourself. Brad Wilson, 250 Sharon Drive in Woodway, 254-776-4337. Edward Jones, member SIPC. In this day and age, you must be able to change how you do business. Think outside the box to ensure that you service your customers. And at Waco Custom Marketplace, we've created our own drive through for your Monday, Wednesday, and Friday shopping needs, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So you can still order and enjoy from our great butcher shop and bakery, including two pounds of eight-ounce salmon fillets for $24.05, two pounds of four-ounce catfish fillets for $4.90, sliced ham or turkey, American cheese and smoked sausage, fresh chicken breast, three and a half pound whole chickens, sliced bacon, boneless pork chops, 80-20 ground beef, four pieces of sirloin steak or four pieces of ribeye steak from $19 to $35. Marinated beef or chicken fajita meat plus a loaf of bread, fresh carrots in Idaho or red beef potatoes or white onions, pinto beans and white rice, flour tortillas. So the great product, customer service and tradition continues at Waco Custom Marketplace with a drive through only Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Waco Custom Marketplace, 425 Lake Air Drive in Waco. This is Waco, and this is Hoosers Jewelers. When locals want luxurious jewelry and at a competitive price, they come here. This is Brad Boozer. He's the owner of Boozer's Jewelers. Boozer's is the premier wedding ring store. They specialize in loose diamonds and wedding rings. At Boozer's, they have seven jewelry counters dedicated to wedding rings and diamonds only. They also specialize in heirloom jewelry, custom jewelry, watches, and much, much more. So what are you waiting for? Stop on in today and discover why the locals trust Boozer's for their jewelry. Y'all listen up. Let me tell you something about group meals from Rudy's Barbecue. It's got all you need for all the folks you gotta feed, smoked meat, sides, and more. There's everything down to the tablecloth, just like the one that you see at the store. At a bridal shower, it's better than flowers. And a long business meeting, it'll pass the hours. It'll feed all the cousins at a family function. It's better than potluck at a church luncheon. Next time you need to feed ten or more, call an order of Rudy's Group Meal. Next in line. Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, the team physician of Baylor Athletics. Our doctors specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of any and all sports-related injuries. Celebrating over a decade of service in Central Texas, our doctors are equipped to handle a wide range of issues, whether it's your foot or ankle, orthopedic spine care, your hand or wrist, knee and shoulder pain, or if you're in need of our arthritis or total joint clinic. Trust the doctors that Baylor trusts. Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. Our goal is to get you back in the game. This is Sikkim 365 Radio. The 4 o'clock hour is sponsored by Boozer's Jewelers, the wedding ring store, specializing in custom jewelry and repair, all in-house. And it's Brewer keeping it to the outside. Brewer lays the shoulder, dive, touchdown, Bears. Sikkim 365 Radio is presented by IdealMRI.com. Your health is important, so is your budget. Here's David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. 
This segment on Baylor Athletics on Sikkim 365 Radio is brought to you by Richard Carr Buick GMC Cadillac, located at the Imperial Drive exit off Loop 340 in Waco. Proud supporters of all Baylor Athletics. All right, 4 o'clock hour. Juice Johnson, Justin Johnson, Baylor running backs coach. He joins us now live. Craig Smoke, Paul Catalina. And I'm David Smoke on Sikkim 365 Radio. So, I, yeah, we want to get into everything football, but I, I want to get, is it true you hammered Yusuf Terry and Madden? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see somebody did some homework. Yeah. No, uh, no, Yusuf Terry definitely uh, definitely uh, got after me in Madden. I actually uh, got the game. You know, I was challenged by a bunch of, bunch of different guys reaching out, you know, wanting to play the game. I wasn't very well versed in the game, and uh, I'm about 0-17, right? <laughs> I'm, saying, <but> that's <laughs> I'm still searching for that first W. Hey, uh, you got to get better with that because that's my, that's you might be playing that way for the next year. We don't know, right? That <laughs> <laughs> I'm still searching for that first W. These guys know how to do all these uh, – you know, they take five minutes before the game even starts to do all these special settings and all this and that. So, yep. uh, oh. no, I definitely got to I gotta get it together on that game. I'm getting better, though. I'm getting better. Thanks for your time, Juice. Paul, your questions for Juice? All right. So, this time has got to be strange. I, I know Coach Randa has gotten all these ideas about you guys and having Zoom sessions with other positions. How creative have you had to get just personally – in making sure that your guys are taking in all the information and you're getting to know each other without actually being in the same room. Yeah, you know, the, the, the thing you, you know, kind of concentrate on and you kind of worry about is just, you know, um, the, the attention span of it all. And like you said, being creative, you know, doing different things so that they're not getting the same thing every time, you know, they're looking at the computer screen, uh, you know, because we're sitting there looking at it all day and, you know, they got a – other academic obligations and and you know we're mindful of of what they have going on you know some of them being back at home and um but you definitely want to take advantage of this time that they a lot for us to uh kind of take advantage of some some football time so a bunch of different creative things and different ways that uh we've been trying to take advantage of that time you know uh, headed up by coach aranda as far as you know uh cross cross talks with different uh groups um, you know, some, some football talks and then just some talks about life, uh, giving guys a chance to get a little more comfortable uh, with guys since, you know, some of us got in and had to get out of there pretty quick. What have been your first impressions and what have been some of the things that have stood out to you from just learning uh, about these players and getting to know them? Yeah, just, you know, the the hearts of the players, you know, is, is, is kind of what I've, what I've channeled into, just kind of knowing their personality, uh, you know, and I think the the heart of you know from top to bottom, everyone that's involved in touching the program is is uh, one of pureness. So just pure heartedness, just openness, just the willing to you know willingness to show them uh, to show you who they are, and then vice versa, them uh, opening up, giving you a chance uh, to show uh, to show them who you truly are as a man, as a person, as a family has just been. Uh, great to see. Very open, um, you know, smart guys, tough guys, um, guys that just, you know, enjoy and embrace every second of life and just try to do their best to maximize every second of it. So got some competitors on this team for sure. Juice Johnson with us on Sikkim 365 Radio. Do you feel like, and it all still comes down to execution, it comes down to talent and coaching as well. All of that has to mix together. But because of the kind of the young men that you inherited and some of the ones that are brought in with that the latest class, does that help perhaps with success during what are unique and strange times? I think so. You know, I think when you when you got when you got guys like that, when it's when it's kind of uh, when you're putting it together and you got, you know, hardworking, smart, tough, blue collar guys, um, guys that, you know, uh, love purely with, with their heart and just kind of go out and just try to attack every day, finding whatever they can to get better. It makes it a little, uh, easier in these times. You know what I mean? Cause it's not necessarily a fight to motivate. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, genuine concern for their teammate and, um, you know, everyone around them that they're doing their part to, to, to get better. So, um, it definitely, uh, definitely makes it an easier transition. I think, uh, 
but you know, at the end of the day, you still got to be mindful of, uh, what's going on and what everybody's going through. And, uh, you know, each year from year to year, it's different and you got to kind of find your, your identity and, and who you, who you are. And we look forward to getting back and gelling, uh, trying to put it together and see, you know, what, what t- type of product we're going to put out there. Did you step into one of the deeper positions at, on this roster? I I believe so. You know what I mean? I believe so. I got, um, you know, some older guys right there at the top. And so um, I think, you know, from just from me, from, from my perspective, uh, position wise, you know, I got two, two older guys there that are, that are ready to roll and some guys that are under them that have, you know, got their feet wet a little bit who, who also are ready to roll too. So, um, we look forward to, you know, getting after it. now, you know, they gotta, we gotta go do the work and put the product on the field. But I think I got a hungry group, a group that's ready, uh, to, um, show, show and prove what, what they can do and what they have. Uh, what are the trademarks of a Juice Johnson coach running back? What kind of things are you looking to establish and, and make sure that your players have down? What What are kind of the, the takeaways of a Juice Johnson running back? I would say tough, 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 tough. Like we'll run through the wall. So the first, you know, you're gonna see see toughness. Um, not afraid to step in there, uh, put their put their hat on somebody, whether that's lift pick up, whether that's leading uh, for somebody else running the ball. So. The tough mentality. I think you're going to see a smart player. I'm going to demand that they know uh, what to do and how to do it. Uh, high attention to detail as far as when we get to executing something. Not only what are you doing, how are you going to execute it uh, with specific detail. So I think uh, tough, smart, high attention to detail, passionate, energetic, just just bringing some juice. Yeah, <laughs> Playing the foot, just, just bringing some juice. Looking to not only lead uh, – you know, not only lead with the voice, but but with actions behind it as well. But you know, we'll we'll look forward to bringing some juice and, and and a little swag to it. Well, you had some of that yourself as a player. How much do you <laughs> think that helps? You know, I, I just think that uh, you know each person kind of has to just just be themselves. Bring bring what you got to the table, and let's see if we can maximize what you already have, and let's see if you can take something away from. You know, a guy or two that's around you, you know, make you better in, in, in a different area. So I think if everybody does a great job of just bringing, you know, what, what they have to the table and working day in, day out to maximize what they have to get better and then pulling bits from each other, we, you know, I, that old saying, iron sharpens iron, uh, we can take a little bit from each other, but definitely playing and, uh, you know, being cut from that cloth, I, I definitely think helps. This uh, this group of coaches, you know, come, came from all different parts uh, of the country. You guys, some of you guys knew each other, some of you guys didn't. What's it like? Anytime you join a new coaching staff, what are those first couple of months like? Yeah, I think usually, you know, when you do it, there's like a little uh, fill out process. You're trying to, you know, figure out, you know, kind of how this guy works, how this guy operates. I, I genuinely do say though that, uh, you know, um, the atmosphere that I've been a part of so far. Um, is is has been amazing has been nothing short of amazing uh it's truly and a lot of people say this uh you know we got a family atmosphere we got i mean but it truly is you know you walk through there there's guys hugging high five and fist bumping asking you how your day was genuinely concerned you know for your family uh guys that love ball working to get better and i think that there was a a lot of familiarity within the staff you know previously you know, at some spots and positions, like I've known some of those guys that are on staff. So there was a comfortability factor there as well. What has it been like seeing Dave Aranda now take over his own program and start to kind of put his imprints, uh, whether it be staff hires or just the organizational aspect of it? Uh, obviously, a lot of people felt like he was a guy who could be considered overdue for a head coaching job. Now he's got it, and what have been your thoughts on that? Man, yeah, anytime you can get up under a coach like uh, Coach Aranda and just – sit there and, and soak up uh, all that he has to offer, you know, all that knowledge, all that wisdom. And it's just been a pleasure just sitting him, sitting there watching him day in, day out, kind of implement his own thing as he goes through and kind of see how he wants to do things. And uh, I've I've been truly amazed and honored to, to be a part of it. Um, I tell you what, you know, you find yourself kind of watching him sometimes and, 
you know, some of the characteristics of, of his leadership and, you know, how he does things are just unbelievable. And you try to, you know, emulate, take notes and kind of model that, model that stuff yourself. So it's, it's, it's impressive. Sorry that you, you we had a writer, a columnist from the Chicago Sun Times, Rick Talander, who was a part of the Last Dance episodes last night that launched. What were you thought? Did you get a chance to watch it? And what were your thoughts of what you saw? Oh, I was tuned in. I was, <laughs> I, I was tuned in from start to finish. It was kind of one of those things where, like, hey, nobody take it personal, but I'm locked in right here. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, grew up a huge MJ fan. Um, so yeah, yeah, I loved it. I kind of tweeted out something, um, yesterday, uh, as watching it, you know, just thoughts through watching it. I think there's a bunch of hidden lessons that, you know, you can apply, you know, through watching that, through watching that, that not only applies to, you know, coaches and players, but just life in, in general from, you know, uh, being told no, right. Being cut, being this or being that, you know, your drive and determination, your passion, you're willing to work for things uh, can kind of help you overcome a lot of that. And, you know, from his mother's perspective too, you know, me being a parent, you know, what if she, uh, when he came and, you know, told her how, you know, how he wasn't going to be on the varsity team and all that, what if she, you know, found blame and blamed the coaches and gave him a, a way out or, you know, she said, Hey, you want it, you, you go work for it. And so I think we can all take a little bit, you know, deeper, uh, deeper lessons from from within his story, and then it's just amazing to watch just because I'm just such a big Jordan fan. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's incredible, and, and I'm thrilled that we've got a few more episodes left to go. Although, and I'll, I know a lot of people want to just sit down and watch them right now. Uh, yeah, everybody was give it to us right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give it to us right now. We got we got time, right? Well, Juice, I know you guys are still at, at you know at the work and, and, and recruiting and doing things like that. I had a lot of success recruiting here as of late, but I'd imagine you guys are all thinking about when you're going to get back out onto the field. How much have you thought about just what it will be like to hit the field for the first time whenever that day comes? And what do you think, or have you thought about what your first drill or what your first directive is going to be once you guys finally have that opportunity? Yeah, you know, I, I, I thought about that uh, a lot. Obviously, as a competitor, you just, you're just itching to get back out there, you know, what you love to do, what you feel like you're called and, and, and built to do. You know, uh, it's kind of kind of at a standstill as far as the the action part of it, right? Being out there on the field with the other coaches, with the players, you know, in the environment, uh, you know, working to get better. So from that from that standpoint, we're kind of you know a little ways from that. But I, I would imagine that it just be I just talk about the appreciation of it. You know what I mean? Not taking a day for granted. You know those days when you get up and you know I tell the guys, hey. You know, it might be an early morning workout. Those early morning workouts, or those days where it's really hot out there, you gotta you gotta dig in and push through. You know, just just having that appreciation, just remembering, hey, you know, it ain't guaranteed to you. And there's a lot of guys that would love to be in your shoes, and just remember what you have now is is once what you only hoped and wished and prayed for. And so, uh, I think it'd just be about just soaking up a quick moment, just appreciating it and uh, making sure that, that they're doing the same. You know, it, it, you can tell. Uh, you you mentioned you have to have some juice. You got Lovett, obviously Ebner. Ebner. And, and, and I, there's a couple of guys Squirrel. that we know. Squirrel. And, uh, no Paul, question. I mean, you got some dudes now. And, mm-hmm. and Paul, uh, Craig, who's the big running back that got loose one time last year? He's a younger running uh, Big kid. I can't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're I, I lost my train of thought there. But you could tell. Where yeah, Quaylen, Quaylen, yeah, Quaylen Jones. Jones. I mean, yeah. that's a that's a dude right there, and so you got different kinds. Uh, who is more energetic if all of the coaches are in one room, and you've got Joey McGuire, who like we know is like at a level of of crazy excitement. Who who yeah, yeah, yeah. who? How do you power rank the energetic coaches? And you have to be a part of that. You're allowed to use your name in that mix. Power rank the most energetic. Yeah, huh? yeah. I'm gonna- <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would say I would say that's adjusted based on like the topic of conversation and what's okay. going on. All right. right. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> based on like topic of conversation, there's a little more passion for certain people, you know. Okay. Uh, as, as, it, as it swings around the room, so no, but I think coach has done a great job of, of assembling that. I think we do have have a staff full of guys that that are energetic, that are passionate about 
um, what they're doing and the type of product and the type of men that we're uh, trying to build here uh, at Baylor. And so uh, on any given day, you, you can go in there and, and find a lot of, a lot of that energy and passion uh, roaming around. So it kind of, it swings around in there. Thank you very much, Juice. Uh, good, great stuff. Stay safe. We appreciate your time. We hope to be able to see you sometime pretty soon. And uh, and again, we got to worry about what else is going on right now, taking care of everybody. But we appreciate your time. Can't wait to meet you again. I appreciate you guys. You guys stay safe and uh, be blessed and sick them, baby. All right. There's Justin Johnson, Juice Johnson, running backs coach at Baylor. Yeah, you kind of put me on the spot there with the uh, Quaylen Jones, and I just I couldn't think of his name. But, I mean, yeah, you just completely forget about the fact that we saw a little bit of him last year. We saw no Squirrel Williams last year because of the fact that he just could not – get over the injuries he was hampered by. But, I mean, you do have a really good group of running backs that he'll be in command of once the time comes. Love it. I love it. Excuse me. Uh, we've seen you know plenty of him by now at this point. He's got the, the senior year to go. Same for Treston Ebner, who I would hope at this point in time is as healthy as he's ever been in his entire life. Uh, now that he's had some some months uh, since the season ended to, to really rest up but I mean that's a good starting point just those two guys right there John Lovett and Tristan Ebner then you add in Squirrel Williams who should be healthy now Quaylen Jones who will be a redshirt sophomore Jonah White who we haven't seen a ton of just yet he was a defensive back when he first got on campus but uh, has been playing running back and so you've got an option there with him at six foot 200 plus the redshirt uh, freshman and uh, of course you've got Tay McWilliams the true frog that's coming in 6'1", 200-plus pounds that I know Matt Rule was a giant fan of. So, yeah, Tay McWilliams, Craig Williams, John Lovett, Tristan Ebner, Quaylen Jones, Jonah White. I think that's a very healthy position at the moment. Yeah, and, of course, one of the guys that uh, you we saw him develop – hasty and what he turned out to be and someone who's going to be in a camp he will be in an nfl camp because of all the things he can do mm -hmm. uh, whether special he can teams catch too. and pass pro and special team he goes down and he's on coverage teams thanks to juice johnson appreciate taylor bryan and baylor football uh for uh, having that happen and, and making that happen now coming up speaking of baylor football uh he is i believe he might be in some zoom classes and possibly done william bradley king one of the best Football players yet available when it comes to the transfer, a graduate transfer who committed to Baylor over the weekend, William Bradley Hines of Arkansas State, King. coming up, Bradley King of Arkansas State, and now Baylor is next on Sikkim 365 Radio. Ideal MRI, the title sponsor of Sikkim 365 Radio. Thanks to Dr. Rob Maxey. Thanks to all of the folks at Ideal MRI. Blessed to be a part of the Waco community, small family business, and right smack in the middle of Central Texas with a goal of bringing down the cost of health care while maintaining high quality. And in today's world, the cost of health care has never been more important. And unfortunately, significant illnesses and injuries still occur. And that's why Ideal MRI is open right now to serve you through this difficult time. They offer premium MRIs just like the hospitals, state-of-the-art technology, and specialists. You want to pay less? You will. Sometimes thousands and thousands of dollars less, whether you're using insurance or not. An Ideal MRI, they accept most insurance companies and all policies, and there are no hidden costs. Even, in fact, by the way, offering financing available, and you're not going to get some bill in the mail later on because of more costs you didn't know about. So if you need an MRI, ask your doctor, wherever that doctor might be from, about Ideal MRI. You can schedule an appointment right now safely from home online at IdealMRI.com and give them a call if you want at 833-IDEAL-MRI. Now, remember... Still follow the CDC guidelines and practice social distancing. Stay home, accept for essentials, be safe, and together we'll get through all of this at IdealMRI.com. Our communities are facing unprecedented times. At Boozer's Jewelers, we care about you and your family. If you're like me, your home has unwanted or unused jewelry lying around. They can have value, and that means we can turn that jewelry into instant cash. This is a great way to get the most value from your unwanted jewelry. At Boozer's Jewelers, we buy all kinds of unused jewelry. So give us a call and let us give you peace of mind and cash for your unwanted or unused jewelry. Waco, Texas, a place with its own unique history and a future bright with promise. Full of remarkable growth and opportunity, and what makes it all work is its people. 
families, raising children, growing businesses. Wake Owens are hardworking with a passion for what's next, and we're proud to be from here, helping Waco to grow and prosper. We are the First National Bank of Central Texas, familiar faces making local decisions. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Hi, this is Grant Taft, and I'm a proud listener and supporter of the all-new Sikkim 365 radio show with my friend David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. Sikkim. Ideal MRI is a small family business right here in Central Texas. We are open to support our community through this crisis. When you need an MRI, ask your doctor for an Ideal MRI. Visit us at IdealMRI.com or call us at 833-IDEAL-MRI. I hate my job, but I don't mind getting up in the morning. I dread each day, but I can't wait to get out of bed. You ask me why, and what I'll say to you is true. Well, you can get breakfast tacos at Rudy's Barbecue. Scrambled eggs and brisket, they ain't fooling around. Salsa drap sun, they're the best in town. Barbecue for breakfast, yes, it's true. Put a smile on your morning at Rudy's Barbecue. Next in line. Hi, this is Mart High School football coach Kevin Hoffman, and I'm a proud listener and supporter of the all new Sikkim 365 radio show with David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. In this day and age, you must be able to change how you do business. Think outside the box to ensure that you service your customers. And at Waco Custom Marketplace, we've created our own drive-thru for your Monday, Wednesday, and Friday shopping needs, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So you can still order and enjoy from our great butcher shop and bakery, including two pounds of eight-ounce salmon fillets for $24.05, two pounds of four-ounce catfish fillets for $4.90, sliced ham or turkey, American cheese and smoked sausage, fresh chicken breast, three and a half pound whole chickens, sliced bacon, boneless pork chops, 80-20 ground beef, four pieces of sirloin steak or four pieces of ribeye steak from $19 to $35. Marinated beef or chicken fajita meat plus a loaf of bread, fresh carrots and Idaho or red beef potatoes or white onions, pinto beans and white rice, flour tortillas. So the great product, customer service and tradition continues at Waco Custom Marketplace with a drive through only Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Waco Custom Marketplace, 425 Lake Air Drive in Waco. Let Camille Johnson Realtors guide you seamlessly through the process of buying your dream home or selling your current one. Commercial, farm and ranch, or residential, Camille Johnson Realtors can smoothly and successfully lead you through any transaction with a team of 24 experienced agents who are excited about serving you. Camille Johnson Realtors services the entire greater Waco area. If you're in the market to buy or sell, contact Camille Johnson Realtors, 104 Midway Center in Woodway, or find them online at www.camillejohnson.com. Camille Johnson Realtors, elegant. Charm, warm, welcome home. All right, so you have your National Signing Day in December, and then you have it again in February, and things have changed the last, what, couple of years or so. And then you have this uh, possibility of transferring. Grad transfers was something that was there, and, of course, now there's the transfer portal. But this weekend, Baylor football, Dave Aranda and, and company, Received a commitment from William Bradley King of Arkansas State, an outside linebacker defensive end, and he joins us now on Sikkim 365 Radio. Uh, William, thank you very much for your time. I know you got still things to do when it comes to classes, and I really love that text you sent to me about that. What was the decision-making for you in picking Baylor? Uh, it was just, uh, you know, the, the genuine, you know, love I, I felt from the coaches and just uh, – you know, the, the, the defensive mindset, you know, the coaches had, you know, uh, you know, they just have great defensive minds over there. And, you know, I felt like they would maximize my potential, and, you know, um, you know, help me to get in position to make a lot of plays for Baylor and, you know, help me for, fulfill my, you know, my long, long, my long term dream. So do you envision yourself being uh, with your hand on the ground or playing linebacker? Or do, you, do you even know yet? Uh, just all of it, you know, I, I see, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All of it. 
I love that answer, William. All of it, just whatever, whatever they want to throw you at. How familiar yeah, were you with uh, Dave Aranda prior to, I guess, discussions starting up? Give us uh, your perspective from the, the transfer side of things because we talk about guys transferring, but we don't really know what it's like for them. So when this kind of came onto your radar, how did those discussions begin, and, and what was it like getting to know the Baylor staff uh, if you didn't know them already all that well? Um. You know, it just, it just, uh, some of the questions, you know, I receive is, you know, why? Of course, you know, um, you know, I wanted to play on a bigger stage and, you know, uh, just so, you know, you know, I have NFL potential. And, um, uh, you know, like I said earlier, you know, they had great defensive minds. You know, uh, we watched my film and, you know, uh, LSU film and, you know, we had some great talks. And, you know, I just really, you know, felt in my heart that I, I belonged to be a Baylor Bear. You uh, you also have to do some homework. You know who they have or who they lost, right? I mean, how much did you study yes, with Lynch yes, sir. and basically almost losing the entire defensive line? Yes, sir. And did yes, did, did, uh, did James Lynch's success, how much did – I know that the defense is different now, but how much did that help in, in your thoughts about what you saw they had? Um. You know, uh, you know, I was excited for him. You know, that's, you know, that's a great accomplishment. But, you know, I just wanted a, a chance to compete somewhere. You know, Baylor had that opportunity for me. Did you have you watched Terrell Bernard at all a little bit? I mean, he's going to be back there with you, the leading yes, tackler sir. coming yes, back from sir. Yes, sir. What yes, do you sir. think about he's, his game? He's a guy. He's a guy. Yes, sir. <laughs> what do you like about his game, William? Man, he's he's physical. You can tell he's a he's just a natural leader. You know. uh you know, I, I can't wait to play with him. You are completing what you have at Arkansas State. Can you try to help us understand how you're weaving through that, plus trying to get your classes finished and then eventually getting to Baylor whenever things are allowed to happen? Come again. Are you you are st- are you still taking classes online or whatever you're doing at Arkansas State? And what do you still have to complete? And if you can get to Baylor, obviously, when things get back to normal. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to report June 1st. Um, and uh, classes, you know, that, it's the easy part now, you know, uh, with, you know, COVID-19 going on. You know, they really just simplify things and, you know, try to help us out the best they can. William, how much has COVID-19 thrown your life for a loop? I mean, semesters obviously are happening online for high schools and colleges. Uh, sports shut down. Just how have you been managing with that and, and trying to keep yourself entertained? Yeah, this is just a just a great opportunity right now, you know, to just, you know, really just understand who I am as a man, and, you know, uh, just focus on me, my work ethic, you know, my family and my relationship with God. If, in fact, the ball is snapped, it's whatever it is, it's a passing situation, can you please take us through the mindset of William Hines, Bradley uh, King, excuse me, William Bradley King, the mindset of getting to the quarterback and someone's trying to keep you from doing that. Yes, sir. I'm not I'm not letting anybody stop me from fulfilling my dreams. You know, I take that as disrespect. You know, if, if another man thinks he can stop me from fulfilling, fulfilling my lifelong dream. Um, you know, I just got a relentless attitude when I'm when I'm going to the quarterback. Yes, sir. Anything else, Paul, Greg? William, thank you. Do you go by William or Will? WBK. WBK. Okay, there you go. I need to remember that because I keep putting Hines in there for some reason. I don't know why, but William, again, Bradley King, defensive end, Arkansas State, transferring to Baylor. Thanks for your time, and we appreciate it. All right, there we go. No problem. Thank you. All right, that's good. That's William Bradley King. And, And if you look at his statistics, uh, 82 tackles, 23 tackles for losses, 14 and a half sacks, five forced fumbles, most likely strip sacks, three fumble recoveries his last two years at Arkansas State. Well, I like his mindset. He sounds like a guy who uh, definitely embraces being on the defensive side and attacking. And, you know, as he said there, nobody's stepping in his way of fulfilling his dreams. Had some great talks with the Bayer coaches and just likes the defensive mindset. And I think that's one of the things I'm most excited about is the fact that in this crossroads that Mac Road had in front of him uh, when deciding what was going to happen with the next head football coach, you could have gone back to a more of an offensive mindset and let's score a bunch of points. Or you could do what he did and stick with the defensive mindset, and, and I like that they're doing that. I think they've got some, some mojo going on defense, and uh, you see it with 
the addition of players like William Bradley King, who is not the former Waco High track star Will Hines, who you keep <laughs> thinking of. Uh, but, yeah, um, and, and former Baylor track uh, guy as well, or I, I believe. So, anyways, uh, yeah, William Bradley King, a nice addition. There were a lot of schools after him, and uh, sounds like a guy at a position of need that will certainly have an impact, uh, you would hope, pretty much right away. By the way, on the uh, three sick, uh, Sikkim365.com premium site, Fact or Fiction with Colt and Brian Etheridge, also, a, a feature on Clay Johnston, the young man whose season was ended because of the ACL. His dad, of course, part of the uh, staff at, uh, now with the Carolina Panthers. Clay will join us tomorrow on the show at 445. And the Tuesday, tomorrow, Jason's going to release uh, a, an all-decade team with Baylor basketball. And, of course, that's going to look interesting. And, and we've had the news. Jared Butler's put his name in the draft. Jason King kind of gave us an idea of what all that means and earlier today, I think it was ESPN that had Baylor among the top four teams in the country with all of who they have coming back, which might change dramatically. Well, yeah, it's already changed this morning, right? Yeah. Yeah. With, with Jared Butler news. Uh, happy birthday. Paul Catalina's birthday was yesterday. Look, just perfect timing. Yeah. Paul Catalina's birthday, he's now 40. He turned 40 yesterday. And uh, uh, Eric Horton. From the Tyler Candle Company, who's one of our guys that uh, when we have guests on the show, we have Tyler Candles and product that we also send to them. Eric Horton's birthday today. He, uh, I won't tell you his age, but it's about the same as mine. Yeah, that's, uh, it's, yeah, you are in the same ballpark, but happy 4 0 to Paul. Uh, without our former work calendars, uh, I don't know anybody's birthday anymore, but uh, yes, a belated happy birthday to Paul. And uh, that's a that's a milestone, man. So congrats. Yeah, I, de- I, I dealt well with it. I really did. That's, that's, that's why when I called you last night, yeah, called Paul. I go, hello. <laughs> yeah, I was. It was. Yeah, believe me, it was. I was totally fine with it. Rashad I'm, Paul Bremont star. They won all those state championships. He went to A and M. He's transferring to where William Bradley King is coming from at Arkansas State. That's a little nugget for you, local nugget for you. All right, all right. So earlier today. Baylor women's basketball announced that Jaden Owens from Plano West High School in UCLA was going to transfer to Baylor and be a part of the program led by Kim Mulkey and company. She will have to sit out a year. She is now on the roster. She's a part of the program, and Jaden Owens, in fact, joins us now live on Sikkim 365 Radio. Jaden, I know you did a Zoom-type deal earlier at a press conference by, I guess, uh, Facebook Live, whatever it was earlier today. What's the day been like for you now that the news is out and you're coming to Baylor, coming back to Texas? Um, it's definitely been very welcoming. My social media has been getting blown up with just all the fans just happy to have me, just welcoming me back and just super welcoming, and I'm loving it. How important was it for you when you made this decision to come back to be back home, close to, close to home in, in Texas? It was definitely a very important decision just knowing that I don't want to transfer again. I want to be here for the rest of my college career, and it was just super important, and I think the coaching staff and the team – members and all that just made it super easy for me Jaden, is it more difficult to transfer when we've got our current times going on the way they are with you know a lack of uh being able to probably do as much as you want exploration wise through a transfer or did you have enough information that it wasn't too difficult for you um i mean i feel like this is a rougher time for sure but i feel like it wasn't too difficult knowing that they recruited me during high school so Mm -hmm. i already knew a lot about the program i know basically every single person on the basketball team. So I think that was also very helpful. So what do you think about the personality of Dee Dee Richards? Oh, my gosh, I love it. I feel like we're very similar. We just love makeup, hair. We just like doing those type of things. So we're super similar. I love it. She's definitely a big sis to me. She sure does like that. She is absolutely a character, no doubt about it. And you know a little bit with Nalissa Smith, uh, obviously, uh, Sarah Andrews, is that correct? And, and even, uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to uh, Jordan Oliver and all that. You know a lot of these players. Yeah, I do for sure. I got to play with J.O. in the summer for EYBL this last summer that we had. So I know her really well. I got to play with Dee Dee as well, too, her last summer at EYBL. And then, of course, I played against Sarah and Hannah. Jade Owens is with us. She's from UCLA, but now has transferred to play for Kim Mulkey at Baylor. It is a different and difficult time. Does then having to sit out a year make it even more difficult, or is that just something you're patient because then eventually it's going to be your time? Um, I mean, I obviously want to come and have an impact, but I feel like 
it doesn't have to be games that I'm going to be making an impact in. It can be practice or anything. So I'm going to be patient. I know my time is coming, and I'm just looking forward to that. How much does it help that you know that Coach Mulkey played point guard at an elite level at Louisiana Tech back in the day? That helps a lot, just knowing that I'm in good hands, knowing that she has the best at heart and mind. So that helps a lot, and it gets me really excited. All right, so you know the history of Baylor women's basketball, the championships, also what Coach Mulkey's been able to accept when they brought in Chloe Jackson, and then obviously now with Taya Cooper, who was just drafted on Friday. Did you have a chance to visit with either one of them at all or just kind of know the history there? Um, No, not really. You just kind of know the history there and following them on their basketball career and just seeing them come in and make an impact. So just watching from afar, but of course having all the teammates that are there now to help along. We're talking to Jaden Owens from UCLA. She's now a part of the Beta Women's Basketball Program. She played at Plano West. Natalie Chow is at UCLA, and she was at Plano West. Did, did you have a chance to visit with her at all? She's obviously fit in good where UCLA is. Was there any discussions with her? Um, Not really. This is really just based off of my family, just what was best for me. I'm glad she made a decision on what was best for her, but along my journey, I think it's just finding what fits best for us. For people who have not seen you play, what are the what are the best parts of your game? What what do you bring to the table that that's that's going to help the Lady Bears? Um, I definitely think just pa- um, passion for my team, just being able to pass the ball as a point guard. That's something I find very important. Getting my teammates the shots that they need and setting them up for success. So playing with the style that Baylor has is just being able to push the ball in transition, getting them the ball where they need to to be successful. You get a little flash to your game, don't you? Can you say that one more time? You, broke you, out? You've got a little bit of flash to your game. I mean, you could easily just be fundamentally strong, which you are, but you, you've you got a little bit of charisma when you're playing with that ball. <laughs> I just try to have fun while I'm on the court. Well, Lady Bears certainly have a lot of fun. How much have you, I guess, learned, Jaden, or how much are you looking forward to uh, playing under a coach like Kim Mulkey, not only because of all the great things that she does, her, her guard knowledge, but it just seems like the Lady Bears are a team that has a, a ton of fun with uh, her at the helm. Yeah, for sure. I just want to match her passion and just be that leader on the floor for her, knowing that she'll be on the sideline and just doing whatever I can to make us successful. I got a question uh, from Nick. Uh, do you, because you're doing this in the middle of this pandemic with the, the fact you would have to sit out a year, can you petition uh, the NCAA to maybe change the waiver and allow you to play immediately, or is that possible? Um, I don't think so. I know that they're definitely thinking about having it passed where I will be able to play for any athlete transferring in one year. So it's just whatever happens, happens, and I'm going to work with it. All right. Uh, please take care of yourself. Appreciate your time. It sounds like you're thrilled. If you're thrilled, that that's great. That's all that matters. And, and obviously, Lady Bear, you know, you understand what Coach Mulkey has with passion. You understand the, the Lady Bear's fan pace, right? The, the passion of, they, of what they bring to anybody that's a part of the program. Yes, I do for sure. I've definitely witnessed it today, too. <laughs> <laughs> and you haven't even seen it all yet, yeah. but thanks for your time, Jaden, <laughs> and stay safe. All right, thank you. Thank you, you. I appreciate that. Jaden Owens, she is a, a transfer from UCLA. She was at Plano West High School. If you watch some of the highlights uh, of her in high school, and even she got a chance. She didn't play a lot, but she has the year to sit out, and then I think three years after that. So this is something where you're stocking up. You're just so stocking not, up. Yeah. This is not like a grad transfer like we just talked about with William Bradley King, who, you know, to, your typical grad transfer has a year to play. They might have a couple of years uh, to play in some cases. But, no, this is just your typical transfer. So it's it's not, uh, not the, you know, one-and-done type of a deal like we've kind of seen over the last couple of transfers that they've had. So, yeah, she'll be able to – join the program and really get settled in and, you know, be a, a lady bear for the majority of her career when all was said and done. And uh, that name in Plano West, I just thought of uh, Tyler Owens, who uh, was in yeah. Texas the defensive back. I don't know if there's any relation there or not, but that's that's what popped into my head. But, yeah, she's a, got a very good personality. She sounds like she'll fit in really well with the, the Dee Dee Richards and, and the rest of the girls. And uh, I think Kim Mulkey's probably pretty excited to have her on board now. When we come back, we have focused in with Ann Myers on the Taya Cooper selection with the Phoenix Mercury. And, of course, the connection with Brittany Griner and Skylar Diggins-Smith and obviously with Diana Taurasi. We've seen now and we've heard from Jaden Owens. We've also, of course, we've heard from others, including what's going to happen with the Indiana Fever. They selected Lauren Cox and their head coach, Marion Stanley. 
next on Sikkim 365 Radio. At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be a part of the Waco community. We're a small family business right here in Central Texas. Our goal is to bring down the cost of health care while maintaining high quality. In today's world, the cost of health care has never been more important, and unfortunately, significant illnesses and injuries still occur. That's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through the difficult time. We offer premium MRIs just like a hospital with state-of-the-art technology and specialists, but you'll pay less, sometimes thousands of dollars less whether you're using insurance or not at ideal mri we accept most insurance and there are no hidden costs we even offer financing everything's included in the price and more importantly you'll not get a bill in the mail later on so if you need an mri ask your doctor about ideal mri you can schedule an appointment safely from home online in minutes at idealmri.com or give us a call 833 ideal mri and please remember to follow cdc guidelines and practice social distancing stay home except for the essentials and be safe and together we'll get through this at idealmri.com we are facing some unique challenges at this time we want to do our part to support not only our community but our medical providers who are really overtasked right now governor greg abbott has required dental offices to postpone all elective dental procedures but still be available for dental emergencies at this time dental emergencies are those that are defined as something that would make somebody consider going to the emergency room for treatment. We're offering to see you at our office Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 8 to noon, and we will waive all fees. We're doing this to support the community and support the medical system. This will allow the overtasked medical community to focus on the truly needy at this time. In the midst of what seems to be so much gloomy news, we want to send a positive signal of our faith in our community and in each other. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. We are all in this together. We're all in this together. We are all in this together. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. We are all in this together. We're 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 all in this together. We are all in this together. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. Thank you and God bless. Marion Stanley has a deep, rich tradition of winning when it comes to women's basketball. Old Dominion, Ann Donovan, and Nancy Lieberman, and of course has also been at Southern Cal, Stanford, and much more now in the WNBA, has been a part of a pro staff really since 2000 with one stop at Rutgers. She's the head coach of the Indiana Fever. They, in the third pick of the draft Friday, selected Baylor's Lauren Cox and Marion Stanley join Sikkim 365 Radio. Coach, thank you very much for being a part of the show. When you knew you had two people in front of you and you kind of had an idea that where uh, INSQ might go, but you weren't sure about Dallas at two, how much did you like breathe a sigh of relief when you did or if you did when Lauren Cox was still available? We were thrilled when Lauren was still on the board at that point. And like you said, it could have gone either way. And uh, we were just really happy that uh, we're going to have the services of a lady, young lady who's just excellent in every uh, way you look. And uh, terrific person, terrific player, feisty competitor, a winner, understands how to play for a championship and compete for a championship. And that's very much what we would like to do. Here, uh, of course, I work with Tamika Catchings, as you know, who's mm-hmm. going into the Naismith Hall of Fame, and, and uh, she helped lead a team to a, a WNBA championship here in, back in 2012. And so we're in the process of building around our core group, and we feel like Lauren uh, really fits in well with our team and can help be a, a central part uh, in helping to advance this team into the playoffs and fighting for a championship. Is part of the thing that makes her so attractive as a prospect is that she could, no matter what your style was, that she could kind of fit in there because she is a do-it-all player, even being 6'4". Exactly right. Exactly right. You know, when you start listing all of the things that Lauren does well, um, it's not just the rebounding. It's not just the shot blocking and defense. Um, she's a very good face-up shooter. She's an, an elite passer, in my opinion. And that's just a little- use you know all these this uh these versatile skills in a lot of different ways so you know i i think that that she is the type of player that makes people around her better she's doing that in the locker room but she's also doing it on the court and and uh, those types of players are invaluable 
You know, those are the kind of players that everybody wants to play with. So I think Lauren is one of those type of elite players that has that ability. Not everyone has it. Kind of piggybacking off of what you said there, I'd imagine there's sometimes when you're looking at a prospect or talking to them or, or talking to other people about them, and maybe you don't get the best reviews on them as a person, but I would imagine you got pretty good reviews on Lauren just as a person off the court. What did you learn about her from uh, those that you spoke with and from her as well on just uh, the, the type of person you can expect representing your franchise beyond the court? Well, you know, Lauren wants to be excellent in everything that she does. And uh, she's faced a lot of adversity in her life uh, at a young age. And uh, to come through that and come out the other side, performing as a basketball player the way she has, performing uh, as a leader and as a student athlete as she has, you know, I'm sure her parents are extremely proud of all that she's accomplished. And I think it just underscores how special she is as a person um, to combine the intangibles with the, the skill set and to be such an outstanding performer and and clear leader, um, that's one of the things that attracted me a, a lot as well, is her leadership ability in very subtle ways. I, sh I shared several of them with Lauren and that I noticed in watching her play that maybe other people didn't pick up. But to me, she's a, a clear leader in a way that's, um, uh, that's uniquely her. Let's put it that way. Yeah, and then it, sometimes we were where we sat to cover the women's games at the Farrell Center when she went to block a shot. Yeah, sometimes you want to tip it to a teammate, but there was an anger there <laughs> that she was intimidating. You've seen you. I, I I want to make sure I was correct with the timeline. <laughs> You've seen big girls, tall girls, post inside do that. Your thoughts about her intensity? Well, you know, anytime you get someone who's so passionate about the game as Lauren clearly is, you know, it just allows them to take their skills to a, to another level. And, you know, she, she definitely uh, can block a shot with some emphasis <laughs> that way. Um, you know, but uh, I share a situation, and I'll share this on the air with you, you know, that I noticed that demonstrates leadership to me. There was a game, um, I'm not sure who so it was, down the, you know, in, in the latter part of the this season, where he was getting pretty chippy out there. It was a really hard-fought game between Baylor and their opponent, and uh, it was getting a little chippy between one of the other players and uh, <clears throat> an opponent. And there was a moment where, you know how players get that look and you say, oh my goodness, something's about to happen. Well, fortunately on, on TV, the cameras kind of panned the whole situation. And what I saw was Lauren immediately recognized the situation and immediately went and, and moved towards uh, the two people involved and said something to her teammate. Now, no one may have noticed how close it might have come to a, some type of an altercation, either verbal or otherwise. But Lauren recognized it stepped up and said something and diffused the whole situation. So that clearly tells me that she's not afraid to take initiative um, and doesn't need a whole lot of time to decide to mm -hmm. decide the person and that people listen to her. And I shared that with her as one example of the things that I have sort of, besides the skill set, besides the obvious, you know, I'm really trying to pay attention to how does this person interact with people? And Lauren kind of is aces, like off the chart and everything. To that end, as a coach, how much does it help having someone who's not afraid to get after her teammates in a productive way and, in turn, her teammates don't want to let down because she she works so hard, you want to match that intensity? Well, that's that's another beautiful thing about Lauren, and I venture to guess, you know, Kim Mulkey has, has instilled this in her program. You know, when you have a really competitive environment where people are trying their absolute best to improve themselves and to improve those on either side of them, you know, it, it brings out everybody's best. And to watch that unfold in front of your eyes is, is really kind of a special thing. And, and Lauren's a good example of somebody who just get out, gets out there and she's working as hard as she can work. So that's all you can ask. And so I think, you know, she's not worried about telling somebody else what to do if she's not willing to do things herself. She takes care of her own business first. And then that gives her... Um, the standing to be a leader and say what she has to say in a constructive and a productive way and people follow her lead. Um, so, you know, I've witnessed it. I've seen it. You know, you've talked to people, you talk to the coaching staff there and they will tell you that. And she's been that way from, from the very beginning. You know, as a freshman, 
you know, came in and wasn't afraid to just stand up and say the right things and do the right things and be about the business of being a, uh, a competitor who was willing to work hard. And that consistency of effort and consistency of thought about how do I, how do I become the very best that I can become and that then help my team, you know, it speaks to people. There isn't anybody in that locker room, I'm certain of it, that could ever question where Lauren was coming from in terms of her priority. It's about team first. And she's walking that walk as well as talking the talk. So, I mean, it's powerful. This conversation makes me wish so badly we could have seen Oregon and Baylor this year in the oh, in the tournament. Oh, uh, I know, right? Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, with uh, the kind of pause that we're under right now with everything, uh, the ladies uh, were drafted on Friday night. Everybody finds out what team they're going to and all that. What's kind of the next step in the process right now for Lauren and for, for everyone else that got their name called on Friday as far as what to expect and, and what to prepare for? Well, you know, first of all, you know, I, I hope that she and her family are enjoying, you know, the moment and savoring the moment. She's worked hard for it. And, oh, by the way, today happens to be Lauren's birthday. So, big shout out to yes. Lauren. If you're listening. Happy birthday. Um, but, you know, it's, it's also about staying ready. So, the challenge right now for all of the players, the, the rookies as well as the returning players, is to be in as good a shape as they can get in while not being able to do any kind of group activities you know if they're doing programs on their own i know that you know lauren and her sisters are are working on things and you know ha- at least have a, an opportunity to, to to shoot buckets and to go run and stay in condition and that's about all you can do right now is try to work on your individual skill work and uh, maybe look at film um and just just be in as great shape as you can be waiting for the time when we can get back together and and um get to practice you know it's, it's frustrating to everybody but i think everybody respects the fact that uh, from a league standpoint the health and and well-being of our players is first and foremost and no one's going to jeopardize that for anything so we're just hopeful that you know the you know the light uh, at the end of the tunnel is a little bit closer now and we can get to that point in time where we can have a training camp and then get on with our season and i'm uh, just hopeful that that's going to happen and sooner rather than later we had ann myers on about an hour ago of course part of the phoenix mercury they drafted her teammate taya cooper but i want to make sure everyone knows this and marianne you don't know this but i went to Stephen f austin when sue gunner was the head coach oh yes yes and so you know immaculata college where you won three national titles uh Uh first televised women's basketball game then you're at old dominion (laughs) and donovan and nancy lieberman and all those Uh, back in the day when it was delta state and Cheney State and Stephen F. And you're, I, I just, you know, that brought back memories for me. A lot of people who don't know this, how decorated a player you were and how many championships you've been a part of as a player and head coach. Well, thank you so much. You're so kind. And uh, I'll tell you what, man, you're like a walking encyclopedia <laughs> of women's basketball. You need to write a book there, sir. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of great names in the history of our game just called out, but none more so than my my friend and one of the people I've always admired, Sue Gunner, and uh, was a real loss for for women's basketball when she passed on. Of course, uh, her most recent tenure was at LSU. Mm-hmm. But uh, you're going back to my old my days of playing when you're talking and, and early coaching days when you're talking Stephen F. Austin. They had a uh, player named uh, Rosie uh, Walker. 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 Man, she was something else. Rosie Walker was as good a post player as there was in her era. And, uh, you know, Sue Gunner's teams were always well prepared and played great basketball. And uh, uh, I'm sure brought a lot of pride and uh, to and fun memories to people there in, in uh, East Texas. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been around for a minute and I've uh, seen some <laughs> great players. And I'm just, I can't tell you how thrilled I am that uh, I have an opportunity that to to work with Lauren Cox and help her, you know, take the next steps in her development. She's an outstanding young lady. We couldn't be more proud to have her uh, in our Fever family, and she's going to join a team that's young and growing and, and where there's a place for her to help elevate us to the next level. Thank you, Marianne. Appreciate it. Taking a trip down memory lane. And also, right now, what's the future? Marianne Stanley, head coach of the Indiana Fever. They drafted Lauren Cox with the third pick. We heard from Phoenix Mercury VP and, and Ann Myers where Taya Cooper's coming. Uh, going and then of course we'll have a comment or two from the Connecticut Sun as they take La Vega and Waco's very own and Baylor's very own Juicy Landrum. Coming up next another trip down 
Cowboys memory lane, Ring of Honor inductee, and maybe should, well, there's the debate, Hall of Fame, probably so. Leroy Jordan, next on Sikkim 365 Radio. We are facing some unique challenges at this time. We want to do our part to support not only our community, but our medical providers who are really overtasked right now. Governor Greg Abbott has required dental offices to postpone all elective dental procedures, but still be available for dental emergencies. At this time, dental emergencies are those that are defined as something that would make somebody consider going to the emergency room for treatment. We're offering to see you at our office Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 8 to noon, and we will waive all fees. We're doing this to support the community and support the medical system. This will allow the overtasked medical community to focus on the truly needy at this time. In the midst of what seems to be so much gloomy news, we want to send a positive signal of our faith in our community and in each other. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. We are all in this together. We're all in this together. We are all in this together. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. We are all in this together. We're 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 all in this together. We are all in this together. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. Thank you and God bless. Waco, Texas, our city of remarkable growth and opportunity with an even brighter future ahead. What makes it all work is our people living, working, and growing together. And we're proud to be from here helping and serving the community we call home. We are the First National Bank of Central Texas, taking great pride in being locally owned and operated. Come see us at any of our five convenient locations. That's the First National Bank of Central Texas. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Hey, this is Bryce Petty, former starting quarterback and two-time Big 12 champion. And I know firsthand the importance of being in top shape both on and off the field. So listen up, men. If you're feeling beat down day in and day out and looking for that high-performance edge that separates the men from the boys, then look no further than the Petty Clinic Low T in Waco. Petty Clinic is a comprehensive men's health care clinic with an atmosphere catering to men. Board-certified Dr. Kent Petty has a special interest in offering the highest quality medical care to men of all ages. Some of the services offered include screening and treatment for low testosterone or thyroid, infertility, high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, while offering comprehensive comprehensive wellness exams, and complete men's health lab panels. High performance men, remember, it's not just a petty thing. This is Bryce Petty, encouraging you to reach out and Google search Petty Clinic Low T or go to PettyClinicLowT.com and get your complimentary lab screening today. Texas board certified personal injury trial lawyer and Baylor alum David Willis and Baylor alum Parker Willis are ready to help if you or a loved one has been wrongfully injured in an auto accident, SUV rollover, industrial accident, 18 wheeler crash, or were seriously injured by a defective product or recall drug. Call them for a confidential and free case consultation at 1 800 Got Hurt or visit them at TexasTrialLawyer.com, principal office in Houston, Texas. At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be a part of the Waco community. We're a small family business right here in Central Texas. Our goal is to bring down the cost of health care while maintaining high quality. In today's world, the cost of health care has never been more important, and unfortunately, significant illnesses and injuries still occur. That's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through the difficult time. We offer premium MRIs just like a hospital with state-of-the-art technology and specialists, but you'll pay less, sometimes thousands of dollars less whether you're using insurance or not at ideal mri we accept most insurance and there are no hidden costs we even offer financing everything's included in the price and more importantly you'll not get a bill in the mail later on so if you need an mri ask your doctor about ideal mri you can schedule an appointment safely from home online in minutes at idealmri.com or give us a call 833 ideal mri and please remember to follow cdc guidelines and practice social distancing stay home except for the essentials and be safe and together we'll get through this at idealmri.com this is sikkim 365 radio the five o'clock hour is sponsored by edward jones investments with financial advisor tom albers staying in touch with you and your money through these difficult and changing times edward jones making sense of investing pitch out to mccormick 
Good use of the blocking, but then just obliterated by Chris Miller. Now back to Sikkim 365 Radio, presented by IdealMRI.com. Your health is important, so is your budget. Here's David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. Man, what a busy couple of hours we've had for Sikkim 365 Radio in the 5 o'clock hour. At the bottom of the hour, Baylor cornerback and safety, Graylin Arnold, who will have his name called sometime this weekend in the NFL Draft. We're now joined by Cowboys Legacy, Ring of Honor member, Cowboys linebacker, Leroy Jordan on Sikkim 365 Radio. Leroy, thank you so much for being a part of the show. Uh, when you have your name in a list, the Cowboys have been in existence, what, for like since 1960, for 60 years. And you're part of a short yeah. list of the Ring of Honor. What does that, uh, not just what it meant to you, but what does that still mean to you? Well, it, it means more to me than I never got elected in the Hall of Fame NFL, but it's more important to me to be in the Cowboys Hall of Fame. You had so many great teams during that era, and you and your teams and the Steelers kind of really built the NFL into to what it is today. What was it like in the middle of that? Did you guys kind of know what you were doing, or was it just was it just kind of commonplace to you? Well, uh, I had played on the championship team in college at Alabama and so uh, I, I was used to winning and so uh, we, we worked hard and Coach Landry was a brilliant coach and uh, 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 he, he, he worked and, and told us we were going to reach that peak sometime so it took us quite a while but we got finally got that first championship you know Leroy, Alabama still winning championships, aren't they? Yeah, they <laughs> are still winning championships, and uh, if we have a season this year, I think they'll be right in the mix uh, again. I think you're absolutely right about that. When fans come up to you and and they talk to you about their memories or their favorite things, what gets what's get what gets brought up more? Excuse me, is it a particular game? Is it just the doomsday defense as a whole? Is it a particular performance by you? What is kind of the memory that seems to be brought up most with you from the fans? Well, uh, I think most of them uh, rely on that first Super Bowl we win. Uh, Super Bowl six, uh, we we lost Super Bowl five, and we went back the next year and won it. So uh, we finally got it right. So. <laughs> you mentioned how it took a time, it took some time, and then eventually, then you got so close, and then there's this dynasty that you have that you have to play against in the Green Bay Packers. There were some excruciating losses, the ice bowl. There were also some disappointed. How did everyone stay focused and not lose the attention of the big picture of just getting a little bit better every year? Well, Coach Landry was uh, great at uh, emphasizing that and just keeping us focused on what we were doing. And uh, he, he was such a, classy guy and if he'd have been a little tougher we might have won two or three more Super Bowls <laughs> <laughs> what was what was the thing that finally got you guys over that hump well just uh, we got so cold the uh, year before in Super Bowl 5 and we didn't win it and uh, determined to go back and uh get it right and get our championship ring <laughs> you know Leroy Jordan with us a part of the Cowboys ring of honor you mentioned earlier the hall of fame and Cliff Harris is going to go into the hall of fame whatever they do or whenever they do the induction uh there when I've talked to Cowboys players from the Landry years there's kind of a little bit of the, I don't know if it's bitterness and that's not maybe the right word but you among Harvey Martin among others, including, obviously, until now, Cliff Harris. It, it been close, have been a part of the discussion, but have not broken through. Why do you think that is? Well, I think the East Coast and West Coast uh, media kept uh, a lot of the, our guys from getting in. Uh, 
uh, over the time uh, when we could really naturally be uh, selected. And, you know, now we got to go in as old time guys. And that's uh, really hard to do. When you watch the Cowboys now, what what uh, what do you think of, of them, and and how long it's been since they've they've played in, in a championship game, much less the Super Bowl? Yeah, uh, I get this, you know, stressed out uh, uh, about it because they haven't been back in the championship game, and uh, or, uh, you know, even a, a league game, championship game, so. Uh, much less the Super Bowl, so I'm I'm pulling for them all the time, but it's hard to stay focused on what they're doing. When you watch them play, what do you see missing that keeps them from possibly being a champion? The fact that they haven't even played in one in 25 years is is mind boggling for the franchise of the Cowboys. But is there something you see yourself that that you feel like might be missing? Well, I, I think the hard work uh, part of it is missing, and uh, I, I don't think they've worked hard enough and uh, uh, to get in shape and condition to uh, play the full season. Uh, so I, I, I think I, I blame a lot of that on the the uh, the. Uh, information we uh, send around the NFL that we don't have to work hard anymore. No. Yeah, what what would it be like now to play when you don't have, you know, the, the contact, the amount of practice, which is all part of trying to protect the players or whatever. You went through the time, I mean, my goodness, with Alabama, Bear Bryant, Tom Landry, through the years where there weren't any of these rules. It, well, how would you react to that? Oh. Uh, I would be disappointed to be playing nowadays, but, uh, you know, the money might make it acceptable. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the kind of money they're making today. Uh, I might tough it up and, you know, be one of the players. You know? mm -hmm. Just slightly different money than you guys were making, right, Leroy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Howley? I made 17000 my first year, and I was a number six player picked in the draft that year. That's like a tenth of a signing bonus now like, for the it, same spot. It, it, when I hear those numbers, of course, you had to deal with the very stingy Gil Brandt, too. Didn't you? <laughs> I mean, you know, we've had him on. Gil's a friend of the show. He went in the Hall of Fame. I mean, Gil Brandt, and I've heard stories of players and Gil Brandt, how, how difficult it was back in those days. Well, I think the one that was so stingy with playing, uh, paying us uh, what we deserved uh, was Tex Rail. <laughs> and Gil had to go along with it to keep his job. <laughs> yeah. Smart man. Look where we got him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. All right. Yeah. So the fact you were running buddies with linebackers that the Cowboys had, and of course, uh, not all of your career, but a lot of it was with Chuck Howley. Yeah, were you both just kind of like almost left arm, right arm, whatever he did, whatever you did, you knew both of you where you were going, your thoughts about playing alongside of Chuck Howley? Yeah, uh, it was it was a great uh, – Chuck Howley and Dave Edwards played uh, uh, together uh, with me uh, for about uh, 10 years to get together, and uh, so it was special times, so – uh, back then, you didn't have free agency where, uh, you know, team uh, players were leaving every year, going somewhere different, you know. He picked off three passes in a quarter from Ken, from Ken Anderson, who was a really good quarter. Mm -hmm. And he would, Leroy, Ken Anderson was a very highly efficient, like his completion percentage, he was not somebody that gave up the ball much. You did that. What happened that day? How did you just, I know you watched a great a bunch of film, but how did that happen? Well, uh, I, I studied the film and uh, got lucky. <laughs> you know, to tell you the truth, I got lucky. One of them was a tip ball, and I, I was in the area where it was 
being thrown. And so I got lucky enough to make the interception. And I got uh, three interceptions in a quarter, like you say, uh, and uh, I returned one of them for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Ring of Honor inductee, and again, Cowboys great Leroy Jordan with, uh, with us on Sikkim 365 Radio. You obviously had the unique experience that not many people can say of playing for Bear Bryant and Tom Landry both. Uh, that that kind of overlap doesn't happen. Do you do you ever look back on that and think of how amazing it is that you got to play for such legends like that? I mean, you, you didn't play for a bad coach for a long time. No, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I, I was so lucky to played with the two guys and I had a great high school coach too and his name was W.C. Majors and he, he was a little town, little school high school coach at XL Alabama and uh, it, it was uh, special people in my life and I've been lo so lucky to have all of these people I could work with teammates and uh, uh you know, coaches, and we had a lot of assistant coaches that uh, were brilliant, too. There was some 25 or 30 years after you retired, and you are still among the top one or two, or I think second or third in all-time tackles. What, 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 what does that say about your career? Well, it says I, the defense was uh, – uh, set up for me and uh, kind of made made me in position to make uh, a lot of plays if I learned what to do and uh, and I'm I'm so grateful for Tom Landry uh, let me call the plays and uh, he let me change uh, anything I wanted to uh, it, it because I watched film so much uh, I took him home every night uh, in in the season and I, I watched films over and over and over again a lot of young players try can, to get the little tip of, mm -hmm. a lot of young players can learn uh, from that if, if you don't mind me one question about the ring of honor you were inducted in October okay. of 1989 uh, Jerry Jones had taken over the franchise and you were his first inductee and you know the history everyone does of what happened when he took over the franchise. Was that kind of a surreal time for you? It's a great day for you, but was that interesting because he was the owner at the time? Well, it was a great time for me, uh, but, you know, and I, I appreciate him uh, putting me in the ring of honor because he, uh, he told me that uh, I thought of, he thought I should have been in there much uh, quicker, but this Tex Ram would uh, hold it against me that I held out on him <laughs> in a contract one time, and mm -hmm. so uh, <laughs> uh, and so he he wasn't going to let me in the ring of honor as long as he was here. Wow, and that's one of the things that happened with the change. You are you're a businessman, and our final question: Leroy Jordan Lumber Company. You're a part of that. I'm looking at the video, the website. It's beautiful, beautiful material and product. How much fun is that to be a part of that company? We've been uh, uh, doing this business uh, for forty something years now. Uh, so it's uh, and my two sons uh, do all the work now. I just do. Uh, go to the office and shake hands with people and uh, 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 tell the employees how, how good they uh, were and uh, how good they are and how important they are in making us a successful company. As you were as a football player in college at the pros and the uh, high school level, thank you, Leroy, for being a part of the show. Congratulations on your career and continued luck. Uh, Dave, thank you so much for having me on. Man, oh, good to talk to y'all. You too. That's great. I, I love going back. And uh, you can tell with Cliff Harris or Charlie Waters or even the guys that played on those teams in the 90s that they, that you know, it's kind of like sometimes they can still disappear. And you could tell how much they have appreciated it. And we have, our, our audience has appreciated Leroy Jordan and Paul. Great question. Paul Bear Bryant and... 
Tom Landry. Yeah, that's that's quite the little Venn diagram he has of coaches. And I, I mean, that's that's a very unique experience. I think about especially the guys from that era that if you played for Bear Bryant and Tom Landry or Bear Bryant and Chuck Knoll or Bear Bryant and Vince Lombardi. Shula. Yeah, Bear Bryant and Shula. That's about that's about a, that's a really small window of, of guys who did that. Mm-hmm. And it's it just boggles my mind that you can go from and going from Alabama where they just won championships all the time and then stepping into America's team right as it was building up to what it was going to be. Yeah, they were right on the verge. I think he was there like 63 through 73 something like that, maybe a little bit longer. But he was a part of those gut-wrenching losses to the Packers, the Lombardi Packers, and they got drilled in a couple of playoff games the next year or two. And then, well, they lost that heartbreaker to the Colts on a Jim mm-hmm. O'Brien field goal, 16-13, and then finally they broke through. Dwayne Thomas had the big game. Lily in the sack, which Larry Cole doesn't get enough credit for that. They hammered the Miami Dolphins before their Super Bowl dynasty, 24-3. to That's Leroy Jordan from Leroy Jordan Lumber Company as well. Craig Smoke and Paul Catalina. I'm David Smoke. We'll come back and catch up on some stories. Craig's got some ratings, numbers from The Last Dance coming from ESPN. I bet they're probably pretty large. And will they get larger because of the way Episode 2 finished? We'll have that and more. Sikkim 365 Radio. Right now, for 41 minutes, Waco Custom Marketplace and their drive through location available to help you set yourself up for what groceries you need what meat or poultry or pork or even seafood you want, along with bakery needs and and much more. It's Waco Custom Marketplace. Uh, They have the drive-thru open Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 3 until 6. Excuse me, from 10 until 6. Excuse me, we're on 3 to 6. The Marketplace drive-thru with Brian Bauer and the Bauer family open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So you have time to drop by there now. In fact, you have 40 minutes to do so. Two pounds of 8-ounce salmon portions. These are Norwegian salmon. And if if you've not had them, you're missing out. $24.05, $24.05. Sliced ham or turkey, American cheese, if you want to just make a good old sandwich. Fresh chicken breast, three-and-a-half pound whole chicken. They have sliced bacon, boneless pork chops, 80-20 ground beef sirloin steak or ribeye steak or the steak of your choice four pieces of sirloin steak for 1935 four pieces of ribeye for 35 dollars they have chicken and meat fajita meat loaf of white bread pinto beans and white rice flour tortillas a great product customer service of course has been a continuing tradition there and the product is fantastic waco custom marketplace with their drive through open monday Wednesday and Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., 425 Lake Air Drive. And if you want to order online, I think you could do that as well. Going to WacoCustomMarketplace.com. Dr. Kent Petty wants you to be the highest performance man you want to be. Are you sluggish, lack energy? Do you suffer from low sex drive? Petty Clinic Low T offers discounted comprehensive lab work to check on your various levels that can make a difference. It's not only time for you to be the man you want to be with higher energy and stamina and proof sex drive, but also the healthiest and high performance man. Screening for cardiac heart disease risk, EKG, cholesterol panel, blood pressure monitoring, testosterone or growth hormone deficiency, male in fertility, hepatitis C, and prostate cancer screening. Petty Clinic Low T offers replacement therapy for testosterone or growth hormones, weight management therapy, and nutritional advice. It's not only time for you to be the it's not only time for you to be the man you want to be with higher energy, stamina, and improved sex drive, but the healthiest and highest performance man. Petty Clinic Low T.com, Petty Clinic Low T.com on Old Hewitt Road, just off Highway 84 in Woodward. Petty Clinic Low T.com. At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be a part of the Waco community. We're a small family business here in Central Texas. At times like these, the cost of health care has never been more important. And unfortunately, significant illness and injuries still occur. That's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through this difficult time. If you need an MRI, ask your doctor about Ideal MRI. You can schedule online in minutes at IdealMRI.com or call 833-IDEAL-MRI. And please, remember to follow CDC guidelines and practice social distancing. Stay home except for the essentials, and be safe. Together, we'll get through this. Our communities are facing unprecedented times. At Boozer's Jewelers, we care about you and your family. 
If you're like me, your home has unwanted or unused jewelry lying around. They can have value, and that means we can turn that jewelry into instant cash. This is a great way to get the most value from your unwanted jewelry. At Boozer's Jewelers, we buy all kinds of unused jewelry. So give us a call and let us give you peace of mind and cash for your unwanted or unused jewelry. Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, the team physician of Baylor Athletics. Our doctors specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of any and all sports-related injuries. Celebrating over a decade of service in Central Texas, our doctors are equipped to handle a wide range of issues, whether it's your foot or ankle, orthopedic spine care, your hand or wrist, knee and shoulder pain, or if you're in need of our arthritis or total joint clinic. Trust the doctors that Baylor trusts. Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. Our goal is to get you back in the game. Y'all listen up. Let me tell you something about group meals from Rudy's Barbecue. It's got all you need for all the folks you gotta feed, smoke, meat, sides, and more. There's everything down to the tablecloth, just like the one that you see at the store. At a bridal shower, it's better than flowers. And a long distance meeting, it'll pass the hours. It'll feed all the cousins at a family function. It's better than potluck at a church luncheon. Next time you need to feed 10 or more, call and order a Rudy's Group Meal. Next in line. We're approaching the time to announce the 10th annual Academic All-Stars Team. 20 elite student-athletes who excel in both academic and athletic competition from Central Texas high schools. And right now, focused on the nominations that have come through so many great young men and women to choose from. Hi, this is David Smoke. Our title sponsor, Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, protecting Texans since 1952. 2020 Academic All-Stars Program is also brought to you by Westdale Asset Management, Englander Design Pack, Bentwood Realty, Southwest Sports Medicine, Alan Samuels Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, Coca-Cola of Waco, Ray Broker Air Conditioning and Heating, the Texas Sports Hall of Fame, H-E-B, the McLean Group, Universal Windows Direct, Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, and the Waco Foundation. We will announce the team on Friday, May the 1st, and highlight them throughout the month of May. It's the 10th annual Academic All-Stars team highlighted the elite student-athletes in Greater Central Texas right here on Sikkim 365 Radio. All right, let's uh, let's kind of not blow through in a way that they're not important. Anthony Scott, remember him, midway guard, committed to Texas A&M International right before the start of the weekend. Craig, ESPN News on the last dance. Yes, so ESPN released their ratings news from last night's episodes one and two of the last dance covering the Bulls' final glory year uh, with Jordan and crew. Average 6.1 million viewers for episodes 1 and 2 over ESPN and ESPN2, making it the most watched documentary in ESPN history. And not only is it the most watched documentary now in ESPN history, but it breaks the previous record holder, which how many of you guys watched You Don't Know Bo on Bo Jackson? Oh, I watched it. Oh, yeah. Had 3.6 million viewers for its debut. So it not only breaks that, but it breaks that significantly by about 2.5 million viewers. So I think some of that's quarantine, obviously. There's a lot more people at home and looking for anything new to watch. But yeah. I think most of it, and I'm not giving that a lot of credit, I think that's some of it. But I think when you you know get close to doubling the previous highest viewing of a similar episode, then that's just the pull of Michael Jordan and those, those 90s Bulls teams. Yeah, uh, it, it's brilliantly done, and it's interesting what Rick Talander told us. If you did not hear this, he's on. We have a, a, the podcast is up with him. Chicago Sun-Times. They haven't even done the last two episodes. No, and so I reached out. I found out through our friend Alexis Cubit that there is a Baylor journalism graduate that worked on the documentary, and I reached out to him on Twitter. His name's D. Graham, and... Uh, he, I asked him to come on the show, and he cannot come on the show yet. ESPN's got a gag order on him until the last episode airs because they don't want any. Kind of like want, those game shows or, or the like reality a, shows, like movies. You yeah. know, like the, you know, uh, if you were in the Avengers movie and you went on David Letterman, like, oh hey, here's who's going to die in this. They were going to dock your contract well, a bunch of money. Tom Holland got several fines then, if that was the case, yeah. <laughs> because that dude's a walking spoiler. Yeah, but that that's kind of how it is. So they don't right. want any spoilers. So we're going to have him on the show after it airs. Cool. After all, so now, I guess the first weekend in June, Mm -hmm. but whenever that is over, we're going to have him on the show to talk about his part in the documentary that he has said he's been working on for pretty much 
every day for the last year and a half. I bet he it's has. been that 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 thing. There, there's uh, Craig gave me this note. Defensive end Justice Reed, who's played at uh, Florida, I believe, is transferring to Virginia Tech. He had also set up visits with Texas Tech or Virginia Tech, Baylor, Florida State, Texas Tech before the NCAA banned in-person recruiting. Took trips to Boise State, Boston College. He was a part of Florida's class of 2014. He just gained a seventh year of eligibility. Seven years of college. It's the Van Wilder way, yeah. baby. That's yeah. a, that, if, if Van Wilder is not his nickname moving forward, then we've just he was the one. Yeah, up. yeah, he was the one that went to Youngstown State, and Baylor was definitely on his radar. They did research and found out that Deontay Cooper, Washington and San Jose State, a running back, offensive lineman Tony Morales at Tech, Brighton Barr, linebacker from Townsend State, UMass, and running back Daryl Poston from Utah were the only ones that they could have, they could find that was ever granted a seventh year. Now, remember Jordan Shipley got six. Yeah. And so did Baker so, Mayfield in a way, I guess. So did Florida kicker Jeff Chandler. <laughs> yeah, well, here, here's how that happens. He got a red shirt as a true freshman. The next two years, he played in 11 games and in the 2016 season had an injury that sidelined him for most of that year. So then in April... Uh, he transfers from the Gators, goes to Young Ta- Youngstown State, side- gets an injury that sidelines him for all of 2018. Um, he had already been sidelined for half of 2017 with an injury, so then he doubles up there. He finally got healthy in 2019, had 19 tackles for a loss and 12 and a half sacks. So actually a pretty good player, it looks like. And uh, yeah, because of all these injuries that he's had, he's he's been able to grab two more extra seasons. And man, he... he, he should have like three degrees by the time that he leaves, you think, with all the tutors and seven years of, yeah. of work. When we come back, we're going to also still hear from the Connecticut Sun. They're, uh, I believe, general manager or CEO on Juicy Landrum being drafted on Friday. When we come back, Graylin Arnold, Baylor has several players that will get drafted this weekend and a handful that might not, but will be in the NFL camps or be picked up as undrafted free agents. Graylin Arnold, next on Sikkim 365 Radio. Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be a part of the Waco community. We're a small family business here in Central Texas. At times like these, the cost of health care has never been more important. And unfortunately, significant illness and injuries still occur. That's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through this difficult time. If you need an MRI, ask your doctor about Ideal MRI. You can schedule online in minutes at IdealMRI.com or call 833-IDEAL-MRI. And please, remember to follow CDC guidelines and practice social distancing. Stay home except for the essentials, and be safe. Together, we'll get through this. Hi, this is Grant Taft, and I'm a proud listener and supporter of the all-new Sikkim 365 radio show with my friend David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. Sikkim. Let Camille Johnson Realtors guide you seamlessly through the process of buying your dream home or selling your current one. Commercial, farm and ranch, or residential, Camille Johnson Realtors can smoothly and successfully lead you through any transaction with a team of 24 experienced agents who are excited about serving you. Camille Johnson Realtors services the entire greater Waco area. If you're in the market to buy or sell, contact Camille Johnson Realtors, 104 Midway Center in Woodway, or find them online at www.camillejohnson.com. Camille Johnson Realtors, elegant, charming. Warm. Welcome home. This is Waco, and this is Hoosers Jewelers. When locals want luxurious jewelry and at a competitive price, they come here. This is Brad Boozer. He is the owner of Boozer's Jewelers. Boozer's is the premier wedding ring store. They specialize in loose diamonds and wedding rings. At Boozer's, they have seven jewelry counters dedicated to wedding rings and diamonds only. They also specialize in heirloom jewelry, custom jewelry, watches, and much, much more. So what are you waiting for? Stop on in today and discover why the locals trust Boozer's for their jewelry. In this day and age, you must be able to change how you do business. Think outside the box to ensure that you service your customers. And at Waco Custom Marketplace, we've created our own drive-thru for your Monday, Wednesday, and Friday shopping needs, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. 
so you can still order and enjoy from our great butcher shop and bakery, including two pounds of eight ounce salmon fillets for $24.05, two pounds of four ounce catfish fillets for $4.90, sliced ham or turkey, American cheese and smoked sausage, fresh chicken breast, three and a half pound whole chickens, sliced bacon, boneless pork chops, 80-20 ground beef, four pieces of sirloin steak or four pieces of ribeye steak from $19 to $35. Marinated beef or chicken fajita meat plus a loaf of bread, fresh carrots in Idaho or red bean potatoes or white onions, pinto beans and white rice, flour tortillas. So the great product, customer service and tradition continues at Waco Custom Marketplace with a drive through only Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Waco Custom Marketplace, 425 Lake Air Drive in Waco. It takes time to reach goals. It's a truth that applies to more than sports. It goes for your financial goals as well. You work hard for your money, and you deserve an investment strategy that lines up with your game plan. And Tom Albers, your Edward Jones financial advisor, can help. If your financial investments aren't putting forth the effort you desire, stop by today for a financial review. Tom Albers, 4301 Lakeshore Drive, 254-776-7605. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Hey guys, Scott Stewart here, head football coach of the Fighting Wildcats from Temple High School in Temple by God, Texas. And you're listening to Sikkim 365 Radio with David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. This segment on Baylor Athletics on Sikkim 365 Radio is brought to you by Richard Carr Buick GMC Cadillac, located at the Imperial Drive exit off Loop 340 in Waco. Proud supporters of all Baylor Athletics. All right, here we go, Sikkim 365 Radio 534. And now joined by Baylor defensive back Graylin Arnold, Coons, Texas, as it's the week of the draft. There's no longer leading up to any kind of whatever. It's the combine or what was supposed to be a pro day or anything else. It's the week, in fact, of the draft. In fact, just a, three days away, Graylin Arnold from Baylor joins us on Sick on 365 Radio. Graylin, do you have any nervous energy, anxiety of not knowing, but you do know you're going to go somewhere? Is What's it like just this close to the draft for you? Oh, man, it's nerve-wracking. Um, hmm. Just sitting around, you know, with the family and uh, trying to figure out, you know, exactly how it's all going to play out because at the end of the day, we can't predict anything. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. We just got to wait and see. So it's, it's a lot of nerve and anxiety built up inside me right now. I'm just trying to see how it goes. Obviously, you've not gotten to work out for teams like they had planned, but you've got your tape this year, which was really good. What have teams told you about what they've seen from you and, and who have you talked to that, that – that uh that's kind of jived with you so far um just about so i didn't talk to just about all 32 teams um for the most part and uh usually whenever i talk to teams they, um they all tell me you know like the interest level of like the things that they see that i can do well and we'll talk about the things that um that that i think i need to work on and Stuff like that, but um, most teams they they all feel like I'm a really good uh, football player. And the biggest question is they don't really know exactly what positions that they want to see me at, just because I'm valuable at a lot of different positions. Uh, most teams that ask me, do you um do you like safety or do you like corner? Uh, which one do you see yourself at a uh, at a fit at for the next level? And which is a really hard question for me to answer, just because. Um, I look at myself as just a defensive player. Uh, I don't have a certain position. I just like more than one. I just like playing football at the end of the day. Uh, no matter what position they put me at, I'm just going to give 110%. Grayland, what have teams also said to you about the potential of playing special teams? Um, they they really – they so most guys, you know, they, they say that they are punt returners and they can return. I mean, anybody can get back there and catch the ball and, you know, get a yard. But, like, they look at me as a – a valuable punt returner at the next level. And, um, I mean, I didn't talk to special teams coordinators as well as, uh, as I talked to defensive coaches. So, um, you know, it's, it's a, uh, I mean, it's just going to play how it's going to play. Uh, I don't really know exactly like what the plans are. I mean, I might go to a team who has, um, a, a dynamic, a punt returner. So I don't really know, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to see how it plays out. But most teams, they really, really like, my athletic ability and, uh, and my playmaking uh, skills I have with the ball in my hand. 
You know, I just think you're a baller. Uh, and I'm yeah. not a talent evaluator. I'm not a guy that knows anything about your hips or your feet or whatever. I just know when I've watched you play and you got comfortable with what they were doing with Phil Snow and the Matt Rule uh, football team, you just made plays. Uh, do you feel like that the versatility should be a strength rather than they don't know where you might be able to play? I most definitely feel like that's a strength. I feel like those are good problems, especially with having a 52, 53-man roster. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, you can have three safeties on your roster and two corners on your active roster. But whenever you got one valuable person that can play both of those positions at a high level, and it's not like, oh, it's, you know, oh, man, we got to put our alarm back there at nickel. Like, no, you have a legit defensive player who can play safety, corner, and nickel. And I'm going to make plays. Like, that's the thing. It's not like I'm just out there going through the motions. Like, I'm, I'm going to make plays. Uh, I feel like, for the most part, you could teach uh, how to backpedal. You could teach technique. But at the same time, you can't teach those God-given talents. And that's just a God-given talent that I have is to make plays and be a playmaker and, and make plays on the ball. So when they ask you the question of which position do you like the most, do you just say, all of them, man, just 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 give me, give me a helmet and put me out there? Basically, that's the, basically that's what it boils down to. Um, when you ask me what position do I want to play the next level, I can't tell you no posi- uh, certain position because I love football and I, I love every last one of those positions. Um, I've competed at a high level at every last one of those positions. So I don't just give a, a certain call. I um, mean, of of uh, I'm, I'm I'm strictly playing safety. No, I play football. So if it's safety, nickel, or corner, you're gonna get great and on them. Um, regardless of what position it is, you're going to get great on. So I don't, I don't just give like a certain call of, oh, I'm just going to say, nah, like, coach, it don't matter. Like if you, if you drive me and you see interest in me at, um, somewhere on, on, on your team. So therefore I'm going to, I'm going to give you what you saw. Graylin, you went through a lot in your career, whether it be just coaching changes or injuries or you know everything, uh, pretty much that you could have faced. You have faced at some point or another, and then you just had the fantastic final year at Baylor. I know it's been a few months now, but just how much fun was that for you to be healthy for the most part, to be able to just be out there and do your thing at a high level? How gratifying was that for you? It was amazing, uh, especially just being out there with, with the guys that I know have put in the work you know some some guys they just be best with, blessed with the ability to uh, be injury free and you know and just do enough work to get by and, and have a good season but um the, those guys that i was with man they put in crazy amounts of hours of work um even the the and it was the hours where it's like not mandatory you know you, you, the coaches don't have to tell you to be there. like you know just being able to play with those guys and give them great and on them was amazing uh, I didn't, I couldn't do it over the past few years just because of, you know, I had some, some injuries and, you know, I was battling some things with, with my injuries, but uh, I feel like I was blessed, man. Just, uh, just to show, just to be able to put one full year together is a blessing. And I always knew if I could just get one full year underneath my belt and, you know, just, just, just give me one full year, no injuries and, and, and give the world burden on it. Then I feel like, uh, people would uh, notice my talent. There is an amazing amount of, um, pride in really anyone's hometown, but you're you're, you're up in Coons, Texas, the southeastern portion of the state of Texas, where there is an amazing amount of talent that comes out of that area. That's the 409, right? It's the 409, yes, sir. What does the 409 mean to great? What does it mean to players who come out of out of the 409 area code? Um, I would say as a 409, as a unit, we part of the closest unit. Um, you know, you got your other area codes and. And, uh, you know, you got DFW, you know, you got Houston, you know. But, like, I feel like 409 as a unit, it means so much more just because we come, we all smaller. You know, we all from the smaller schools. And, you, you know, you don't, everybody got they say-sos and thoughts of us. But we understand the level of talent that we that we have down here. We understand it. Don't nobody else understand it because it always, most of the time it get overlooked. But, I mean, for me... The four nine, I feel like at the end of the day, I know everybody from here. You know, they they have my back. Uh, they got my, I got their support, and you know, they wishing for the best for me. And I feel like that's what makes us just so close as a unit. Because you know, in them, in them bigger cities and things like that, you you know, you have some guys not liking others and things like that. And they, you know, we just all close. It's family down here. 
especially you, once you get to that that level. Mm -hmm. You have come. You come from a city that's got just over two thousand people. But I've, I think I've either read or I've heard you discuss this before that there's a chance the odds of getting out of Koontz or getting out of some of those areas is very difficult, and that you don't want to be a statistic. How much does that mean for you to be able to make it and, and be representing your hometown? It means a lot. It means so much to me just as it does to the youth that's growing up in Koontz, Texas. Because um, growing up, me, I always have dreams of, you know, of making it big. And regardless of whatever it was, football or basketball, I always had those dreams. But it's like, who do you look up to that, that's done it from your city? Nobody's done it. So how do you? How can you say, oh, I want to be like him? Oh, he went to Coons and he did it. So it's it's hard to say that because nobody's done it. So it's always like, oh, man, if you want to make it out of here, you got to move schools. And that was always the thought process. And it's still the thought process. But I'm trying to change it to where, like, the kids, they understand that, like, if you just do what you're supposed to do, go to class, work hard, and regardless if you don't make it big or not, you will have a better shot at life. Uh, just doing the right things, keeping your nose clean, go go to go to class, do your homework, all the little things that you think that you, that you don't have to do or you don't really want to do, just do it, and uh, it'll pay off in the future. And that's what I'm really trying to do with you know, as far as the youth and the community of Coons. I want everybody to understand and see that it can be done if you want to do it, but you have to do it. Nobody else can do it for you. One of the big reasons that you 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 have this opportunity now and that you were able to, to declare early was uh, the the interceptions and the turnovers you created this year. Uh, do you think back to all the work that you and your teammates did in the offseason to build up to a team that was almost incapable of getting turnovers in one year and then that was pretty much what you guys did this past year? Oh, yeah. And I feel like that all started at practice. Um, I remember in the, we was in the off-seasons, and, uh, I mean, Denzel sitting out there with, a, with his hand broke. <laughs> and uh, he's he's still doing releases. We all can. And, we, and we're not taking the easy on nobody. We all can see at a very high level. Uh, we all – I mean, I did the case of finger. Kept on going. Like, we've all battled through stuff and continued to go because we understood that we was not trying to be – no losing team, and we want to give it our all this year. We understood what we was going for. Um, and I feel like that all played a part. Even back to the practices, whenever you tired and everything plays a part in the success that we've got. Um, every pick that I feel like I've had in the game, I've seen it happen at practice. And that's, that was the best part of it. Just, uh, just, just working hard at practice and, what, and just seeing my work translate into the field in the game, in game situations. Graylin, we've heard a lot about Denzel and, and also James Lynch. I mean, there are a couple guys who are for sure going to get drafted. You know, even some talk about maybe Denzel in the late first round if things fall the right way. But there's a lot of other guys like yourself uh, that are out there trying to get drafted as well. You got a up close view of Jamison Houston uh, there for many years, uh, but he's not a guy that's being talked about a lot. But just for the prospects like he and a Bravion Roy who didn't have that pro day opportunity like yourself, what do you think of those guys and, and what teams are looking at? Uh, with those types of players at the next level? Um, once they, They'll get a shot, and once they get a shot, teams will realize, I think it's, it, it's going to be not just so good for them and our class, but it's going to be good for the younger guys because teams will see what type of young men Baylor is building. It's not about like, oh, he's just this phenomenal athlete, but he's it's a lot of other questions that's going to be answered, checked off of those type of guys and, and, and me, myself, because, like, we aren't the type of guys that you're just going to have to worry about. Oh, if you give them $100,000 or is he going to lose his mind? Like, you know, that's the type of questions that that, that, uh, that the NFL are worried about for us guys when you're investing in guys and trying to figure out these players. Because at the end of the day, Bravion Roy, in my eyes, I think he's one of the best in this draft class at what he does. Jameson Houston, I don't know another guy at that size can move and run like he does. So once they get their foot in the doors, I know it's, it's going to be good for them. I mean, I'm not really stressed out about them. Denzel, uh, like I, I mean, I'll say it again. I've said it a hundred times. If he don't go first round, I would be very surprised, and I probably would be a little bit salty as if, like, <laughs> what? Like, why, why, why wouldn't you draft him first round? Like, yeah. What what more do he have to prove? Like that would be really my thought. 
um, James Lynch, he should be right up, right up there in that second, second round. Like honestly, that's just what I. I don't know. Maybe I is because I work with these guys and I know the amount of uh, the hours that they didn't put into it, and I know that it's not fake. They really love the game. Maybe it's that. So I feel like they deserve a lot more than what what might be given. And I feel like a lot of you know I, maybe I just got the I got high hopes for them and I just wishing so much of the best for them. But I know they deserve it just because of the work, just as well as me, Chris, uh, Bravion, uh, all of us. Lynch, um, we all deserve it just because I know what we've been through. But besides that, I know the work that we put in. I know the, the mental part of football that a lot of people don't see and understand. But at the end of the day, if, it's, if God says for you, then no man can stand against it. So, um, you know, you can hold us off for so long, but after a while, you know, uh, you know, whatever is supposed to happen is going to happen. Man, you, you, uh, your your uh, your face to face interviews or Zoom whatever the hell they're doing, uh, you 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 light up a room, buddy. And don't ever lose that, Graylin. Don't ever lose being real because you are so real, and you have everybody's back. We have your back, and we appreciate your time. Thanks for the agents for setting us up. So glad we had you on, and good luck this week. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot. Wow, that was that's yeah. amazing stuff from Graylin Arnold. I just couldn't help but during the entire time that he was talking, I uh, just think of how much he's grown up, you know, from the four-star rated defensive back out of Koontz that was a part of a good recruiting class there under Art Bryles that, you know, turned into a class that, uh, you know, got got uh, pretty much blown to smithereens, really, you know. It, it just got blown up uh, back then, and there were a few guys who hung on and hung in there. And Graylin Arnold, amidst all of that, then has Jim Grove walk in, and you know he's he's got the the bowl victory, but then it's one in eleven, and it's hey trust the process, and it's all of that, and he very easily like so many other guys could have gone sideways, and he just stuck with it, and even that last year, uh, not this past year, but the year prior, you know here's a guy who you feel like is really going to be one of the more talented members of the team, and then he's just hurt all the time, right? And so it's just like, is it ever going to? Just click, and man, did it click this, this past year because sure he did. did it in every way that you read in the scouting reports in high school about him as far as being a ball hawk, you saw that. Uh, being a great return guy, you saw that. Being a playmaker, you, I mean, you saw it all. And so that's why I, I definitely understand him making the decision to leave a year early, especially because he don't want to be the guy who's got the seventh year of eligibility like the dude we were just talking about a few moments ago. But I was glad to see him healthy and really get to display mm. his full uh, repertoire. And he did that, and I think that's why he's going to get drafted this weekend. So emphatic, so belief. I mean, just so raw, yet so uh, – just but, so – I think about it, too. Like, think about what he probably thought when Matt Rule first arrived to listen to him talk right now. You know, as mm. far as the buy-in and what it took and what he learned and all of that, the maturation, I just think it's amazing. I do. I absolutely do. I agree with you. All right, coming up next, we'll have a couple more stories. We're going to hear from the Connecticut Sun on Juicy Landrum. Paul Catalina, Craig Smoke. I'm David Smoke. Thank you for listening. This has been amazing today. It's all, Paul, what the job you've done, weaving in and out of the topics and or, uh, the, the guest, the timing, phenomenal, the sponsors, what we do here with all the great teamwork. It's just magical. Sikkim 365 Radio. At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be a part of the Waco community. We're a small family business right here in Central Texas. Our goal is to bring down the cost of health care while maintaining high quality. In today's world, the cost of health care has never been more important, and unfortunately, significant illnesses and injuries still occur. That's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through the difficult time. We offer premium MRIs just like a hospital with state-of-the-art technology and specialists, but you'll pay less, sometimes thousands of dollars less whether you're using insurance or not at ideal mri we accept most insurance and there are no hidden costs we even offer financing everything's included in the price and more importantly you'll not get a bill in the mail later on so if you need an mri ask your doctor about ideal mri you can schedule an appointment safely from home online in minutes at idealmri.com or give us a call 833 ideal mri and please remember to follow cdc guidelines and practice social distancing stay home except for the essentials and be safe and together we'll get through this at idealmri.com are you in the market for a new home or are you trying to sell your current home 
upsizing, downsizing, whatever you need, you'll need a realtor in your corner that can guide you through anything you'll encounter. Contact Lance Donaldson and the Donaldson family team, brokered by eXp Realty, and let them be your go-to source as you search for that perfect home. Lance is a good friend of mine. He's a great guy. He is awesome. He will absolutely take you through a process and buying a home is a very stressful thing there's so many questions he's a fun guy to spend time with and hang out with so you know you're gonna have to go with your real estate agent to see all these houses you want to go with someone who's going to put you at ease and is going to be a fun guy and tell you uh, everything you need to know and have your back all through the process and listen to your needs and meet those needs. That's what Lance can do. So give him a call, 254-214-3713, or visit his webpage, lancedonaldson.exprealty.com. We are facing some unique challenges at this time. We want to do our part to support not only our community, but our medical providers who are really overtasked right now. Governor Greg Abbott has required dental offices to postpone all elective dental procedures, but still be available for dental emergencies. At this time, dental emergencies are those that are defined as something that would make somebody consider going to the emergency room for treatment. We're offering to see you at our office Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 8 to noon, and we will waive all fees. We're doing this to support the community and support the medical system. This will allow the overtasked medical community to focus on the truly needy at this time. In the midst of what seems to be so much gloomy news, we want to send a positive signal of our faith in our community and in each other. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. We are all in this together. We're all in this together. We are all in this together. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. We are all in this together. We're 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 all in this together. We are all in this together. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. Thank you and God bless. Hyatt Edward Jones become one of the biggest financial service companies in the world. By not acting that way, financial strategies, one-on-one advice, it's a big difference. And that's why Brad Wilson, your Edward Jones financial advisor, makes sense of investing. Experience the difference for yourself. Brad Wilson, 250 Sharon Drive in Woodway, 254-776-4337. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Hi, this is Jeff Hume, head football coach at Midway High School, and you're listening to Sikkim 365 Radio with David Smoke. Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. Hey, this is Bryce Petty, former starting quarterback and two-time Big 12 champion. And I know firsthand the importance of being in top shape both on and off the field. So listen up, men. If you're feeling beat down day in and day out and looking for that high-performance edge that separates the men from the boys, then look no further than the Petty Clinic Low T in Waco. Petty Clinic is a comprehensive men's health care clinic with an atmosphere catering to men. Board-certified Dr. Kent Petty has a special interest in offering the highest quality medical care to men of all ages. Some of the services offered include screening and treatment for low testosterone or thyroid, infertility, high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, while offering comprehensive comprehensive wellness exams, and complete men's health lab panels. High-performance men, remember, it's not just a petty thing. This is Bryce Petty, encouraging you to reach out and Google search Petty Clinic Low T or go to PettyClinicLowT.com and get your complimentary lab screening today. Here we go, Craig Smoke, Paul Catalina. I'm David Smoke. Paul, you have the Juicy Landrum, the Connecticut. we have time I, for that? Yes, it's not very long. All right, it's from Mitchell Etis, Edis. Edis. Uh, the CEO of the Connecticut Sun on La Vega's Juicy Landrum being selected by their franchise. It's a big part. I mean, culture, chemistry, that championship locker room are really important to us. And what I, what I admire is that Juicy's played alongside of other great players and never been disruptive, never brought drama to that locker room, uh, was an unheralded piece to their national championship. It's an unheralded piece uh, to the season that they had this year. Um, you know, she's always been able to fit in. And, and for players coming into the league, being able to understand that their role may be different than in past uh, and be asked to play a different role, how those players handle it are really important. Juicy's already handled that because she's been used to being around other superstars. Uh, Not everybody can do that. And uh, different programs, different franchises are in different uh, positions in the WNBA. Some teams are in rebuild mode. Some teams are in win mode now. 
I would argue that we have one of the best starting lineups in the league. Um, they're showing Game 5 of the championship series currently on ESPN. There's a reason they're showing us. Uh, we have an outstanding uh, starting five. So it played into a fact that Juicy could walk in and steal a roster spot and spot. really, really play a role for us and, and, and thrive in that role because she's shown she's done it with other star players at Baylor. That's the, that's the CEO of the Connecticut Sun. We have had two Hall of Famers on today. Actually, Leroy Jordan considered, a, I think, a college football Hall of Famer and a ring of honor. Ann Myers and Marianne Stanley when it comes to the WNBA. Uh, let's see here. Anything else? Any other stories we have not hit on? You know, I just uh, I wanted to uh, just talk about real quick. There's a lot of... You know, think and look, and I'll tell you, I don't like this coach at all, and especially when I got to to encounter him in, in Salt Lake City. But a lot of coaches, a lot of CEOs in sports franchises, like uh, Derek Jeter is not going to take his five million dollars salary from the Marlins this year, so they keep people employed. Jim Beheim and former Baylor special teams coach, now current head football coach at Syracuse, Dino Babers, uh, will take a pay cut to help with financial shortfalls. Uh, so I, I think those things are cool uh, in this time where coaches are are seeing that, yes, I make a lot of money, and it would certainly help if I took a little bit of a pay cut because they're not going to miss any meals based on what they, I mean, a lot of them could not could take the whole salary away for a whole year, and they'll be fine. Yeah. Has no. anybody balked at the salary reduction? Yeah, I, um, uh, Grant Wall. Well, I'll not tell you, that's yeah. a reporter. He yeah. got yeah, he got, slammed pretty good for that. They basically, yeah, yeah, he got, and they, they did, though. a yeah. little more complicated than... Yeah, but, but yeah, he, he was complaining for losing his job after making healthy six figures to write, and I don't think that that really helped his cause. In especially not for the company that bought the. No, it, and it, it, then they buried him by saying exactly exactly what, happened. what he made and yeah. how he didn't drive any traffic, and that led to I think a different reaction than he expected because there were certainly a lot of people who were like, "Yeah, that company stinks, man. That's totally wrong for them to call you out." But at the same time, there was a good number of people that were like, "Wait a second, you were making five hundred thousand dollars to write about Sports Weekly? Are yeah. you kidding me? You should be." Thinking thankful for that so anyways all right so dylan chapman thank you sir for being here thanks to jason king rick talander uh, eric galco and myers juice johnson william bradley king Jaden owens marion stanley leroy jordan graylin arnold paul catalina craig smoke i'm david smoke thank you to our great sponsors thank you for listening whenever you do however long it might be back at it tomorrow at three this is sikkim 360